to the Am stream. Welcome to the Zyfo Show this Friday evening and how are we all doing? Welcome. Tonight we're having a kind of a CPC retro dev special. A celebration of all that is great of the CPC retro dev game creation contest. A kind of pre-party before next week's big event because next week it is the 2021 CPC retro dev with the um, awards prize giving ceremony early in the evening on their own uh, like YouTube channel. Uh, I'll, sorry, I'll release details later next week. And then after that, we will be going live with our own playthrough of all the entrants in the Red CPC Register. But tonight is all about celebrating all the previous years. And there are many, many, many games I have never even looked at uh, myself, or even, let alone played on stream or whatever. Because I think I only joined the CPC Retro Dev and the Jewelry in 2017, I think it was. And I only became aware of it in 2016-ish when um, Outlaws was, uh, was the winner that year. And then, wow, what a game that was. And um, that's what got everyone, I think, um, that hadn't heard of it sort of interested in looking into it. Because he had been running for about three years previous to that. So there's at least three, year, three four years worth of games I have never seen played or touched. So tonight is a night to sort of... Um, so remedy that and look over it, look over them and celebrate everything through the CPC Retro Dev. And what better way to celebrate tonight than having the uh, the guy, the man himself, who created and, and has curated and continued to the CPC Retro Dev, Professor Francisco Galigo will be joining us live on the stream for a live chat and interview about the CPC Retro Dev around about uh, half past nine hour time, so that's in about 15-ish minutes. So Fran will be joining us very shortly, I would say. I think he's already in the chat, so if you see a name called Professor, Re Professor Retro Man, that is Fran, or Francisco. We, I think we're allowed to, Fran, I'm okay, I'm okay to call you Fran, um, <laughs> a short name. Um, but yeah, so Fran should be in the chat, so feel free to have a chat to him and make him feel very, very welcome. There he is! There he is! He says, I'm here! Yeah. <laughs> so Professor Retro Man is Francisco there, and uh, I'm okay to call you Fran, aren't I? Uh, or would you prefer Professor Francisco? <laughs> Let me know. Um, okay, so what we're going to do then is we're going to do the greetings like we normally do, which is like to welcome each and every one of you to the stream tonight. So I shall set a timer. Uh, she's just taking a set record of like off there just for a second. Oh, 15 minutes starting now. So in 15 minutes, uh, we will get Fran on the stream to talk to us. And there he is. He says, glad to be here. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Professor Retro Man, a.k.a. Francisco. The head of the CPC Retro Dev. And boy, do we have a lot to, a lot to talk, talk to him about. So if you have any questions for Fran um, as well... Uh, get thinking now, there might be opportunity to ask Fran a few questions live on the stream in a little bit. And my cat is here to, here to say hello to Oh, Fran, my cats are hiding away in terror at the moment because fireworks are going off everywhere because it's bonfire night here in the UK on the 5th of November. So my poor cats are cowering under a couch at the moment, the poor things. Anyway, anyway, my greetings. Right, let's have a look then. Let's have a look. I'm going to scroll all the way up to, my, to the top of my chat window. And see that who was first in the chat tonight. First in the chat tonight was Rob Small. Good evening, Rob. How are you doing, my friend? Uh, CPC Retro Dev is like Christmas for Amstrad fans. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Can't wait for next week, next Friday. It's one of my favourite streams of the year to do. 
Uh, Mr. David Jenner here. Welcome. This my, I will be late so my team's in the tally for change. All right, good luck in the footy, David. What team do you support, if you uh, heard me there? Uh, Gaming Hamster, welcome. You had a good time on Marbles last night. Fantastic, Gaming Hamster. Still don't know who you are on Twitch. You won't tell me, but fair enough. Welcome, Gaming Hamster. Next in is the legend that is Mr. Pete Walker. How you doing, Pete? Thank you again for Mrs. Zypho's Master System. Uh, and also my copy of Bridget. <laughs> Thank you, Pete, for everything you've done, mate. It's lovely to have you here tonight as well. Um, Edward Berger. Good evening, Edward. Of course, is a great coder of Amstrad Games. Welcome. Welcome, mate. How's your uh, projects going, coming along? Chiefy89 says, Holla, and good evening, everyone. Since I might not be awake... Uh, and sober enough for the whole stream uh, again. I do plan on dropping a big donation earlier on coming soon. Oh, there's a donor that came in at the start of the stream. Let me replay that. Oh, <laughs> Chiefy89, thank you very, very, very much. For the 464 at the Euros there for the super chat. Thank you, Chiefy. Thank you very, 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 very much. That is very, very kind of you, my friends. Bananas in the chair for Chiefy, everyone. That's how we like to thank our kind donators, giving them some bananas. Thank you, Chiefy. Thank you very, very, very much, my friend. That is greatly, greatly appreciated. And lots of love to you, man. Hope you're doing well, Chiefy. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> Enjoy getting drunk this evening. Next in, we've got Dinook. Hey, Dinook. How you doing, my friend? Welcome. As always, love the Robocop avatar there. Mr. Craig Harrison, the Craig's bar is in the chat as well. Good evening, my friend. It is lovely to see you here bright and early. Hopefully, hopefully, I saw that you had a bit of a crappy week at work. So hopefully we can uh, take your mind off things and give you a laugh and uh, relax with some Amstrad retro goodness and all that kind of stuff. Welcome, Craig. Good to see you again, my friend. Next in, FC Den Hog is in the house. Welcome, FC. You're happy about your football team this week, aren't you, FC? <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Moritz the Underdog, another great coder of Amstrad games. Um, don't forget, you can get Moritz um, the Underdog, the game, uh, on, uh, you can buy a physical copy of it. Hang on, let me just check. Where's the link? Where's the link? Where's the link? Here we go. Ah, here we go. I'm going to spam a link in the chat. Go and have a look at that. If you fancy buying a brand new Amstrad game in a in fantastic physical media as well. Actually, I'll show you very, very quickly. I'll show you very quickly here. Where, where's my browse capture? There it is, Moritz the Striker. And look at it, look at this. You get it in a lovely actual metal tin. It's beautiful, and there's the cassette. There's also a disc version, I think. Uh... Oh yeah, there is. Uh, there... there you go, and there's the disc version. You get extra stuff in there. You get a referee's whistle, <laughs> a bottle opener, uh, and a yellow car to brandish at people who have been naughty, etc. So that's Moritz's uh, stuff there. Make sure you buy a copy and support um, our coders. There we go. Welcome, Moritz and Sebastian. Uh, where, where did I get to? Uh, okay. Uh, Sabata sneaks in, rises and sneaks out. I didn't rise this evening, unfortunately. I leapt into my chair like a panther. That's how I arrived. Never mind, Sabata. Welcome. At least you at least you rose there. Um, where am I? Okay. Uh, Mr. Darren Carl. Good evening, Darren. How you doing, my friend? How's your week been? Thank you for your continued support, as always, my friends. Next in, ahoy, Johnny Boy. Shalom, Johnny Boy. Welcome. How are you? How are you, my friend? Dirty, dirty kebab and vodka on the go this evening, I, I suspect. Mr. Darren Connor. Good evening, Darren T. Connor painting. <laughs> the old name. Welcome, Darren. Nearly finished on the um, uh, labyrinth picture yet, for uh, painting yet? I hope so. I hope so. Uh, you might get Mrs. Zypho wanting to buy it off you. Too many Darrens, yes. <laughs> uh, next then, German78 mushing into the stream. Welcome, German. Uh, the Charles Wayne movies only started getting good after the third one, which is news in the horror franchise that is usually the opposite. Yes, uh, me and Mrs. Life have watched The Bride of Chucky a few weeks back, and she quite enjoyed it, so that's all good. Uh, welcome, German. How you doing, my friend? Good Halloween movies as well. Vimster, good evening, Mr. Vimster. Welcome as well. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Mike ZT as well. Well played in uh, Ant Stream as always, matey. Hope you get how you get it on the new um, game. Um, okay, Scott. Good night, Mr. Scott Rosen. Night, night. No problem, no problem. Mrs. Zypho is in the chat as well, aka Kate White, aka the Tattoo Paradin. 
and the Glammy Drop Bag. So many names. Anyway, welcome, Mrs. Zypho. Thank you for being so supportive, as always. Lots of love to Mrs. Zypho. Mr. Robert Berry. Good evening, Rob. How you doing, mate? Are you down at the um, club night tomorrow night? We both go to sometimes and frequent. <laughs> welcome, Rob. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Ruffrim! Good evening, Ruffrim. Is that a Miss Input avatar? Miss Input was one of the winners of the CPC Ratchet Dev one year. Fantastic stuff. How you doing, Ruffrim? Welcome. Good to have you back on the AM stream as always. Mr. Zen Zero as well. Good evening. Welcome. Right, I've got eight minutes, so I'm going to have to speed up here a little bit. Okay, right, right, right. Um, Mr. Kev Howe. Good evening, Kev. Good to see you again, my friend. How has your week been? Manic Panic as well. Evening to you too, sir. Welcome. Uh, we've got CPC Game Reviews. Nish, how you doing, Nish? And uh, thank you ever so much for trying to do that uh, thing for me. Uh, but yeah, I swear blind, unfortunately. I can send you screenshots. It's uh, not doing the thing that it's supposed to do. So, um, yeah. Um, I, I saw your message earlier today. I'll get back to you, Nish, anyway. I'll, I can send you some screenshots if you want. But thank you for uh, thank you for doing what you've done so far, Nish. Um, secret, secret project, secret thing, guys. I'll tell you all another time. Uh, Robin Hood, the Retro Games Wiz. Good evening, Robin. Welcome, my friend, and thank you for your continued support. Simon Green, greetings, my friends. Welcome. Oh, you're doing the uh, Star Trek. Oh, I can do it. There you go. If long and prosper, Simon Green. Welcome, welcome. Um, who else have we got here? Uh, let's scroll through. Man Shovel, how you doing, Am Shovel? <laughs> Good to see you, my friends. Have you had? Have you witnessed the CPC Retro Dev yet, Man Shovel? I can't remember. Can't remember. How long have you been with us? But well, you're going to experience it for, for, for real next week and a bit of it tonight. Welcome, Man Shovel. Welcome, welcome. Um, let's scroll through. AD Sneaker Freak. Sneaking into the stream of Gleaming Pair of Adidas Trainers. Welcome, AD. Nice to see you, my friends. Welcome. Um, right. Six minutes left. Right. I better hurry up. Oh, Frances uh, Al Alsosa. Uh, I apologize if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but Fra Francesc or Frances. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. I uh, hope you have a nice time here tonight. Are you from the University of Alicante as well? Yeah, by any chance? Or just interested? Um, retro or bus? Welcome, my friends. Happy bonfire night. Wish it was this time two weeks ago in the Norbrick Bar. That would be amazing. That would have been amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Shame, though. Unfortunately, my poor cats are not enjoying them, though. Um... Andrea Wyatt. Hello, Andrea. Welcome, Andrea. How are you keeping? How's things with the family? Welcome. Here bright and early as well. Fantastic. Welcome, Andrea. Uh, we have Paul Hayward in the chat as well. Mr. P uh, Paul, how are you doing, my friend? Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Oh, dear. I've had a thumbs down on the stream. I, I suspect I know who that might be. <laughs> Never mind. Um... Uh, let's see, who else have we got here? Ravi uh, Jagannadan. Oh, mate, I'm sorry for pronouncing your surname wrong. Just call you Ravi for sure, then, yeah. Does everyone know, is everyone, uh, does anyone know if everyone is, everyone's with Wally's on the Amstrad? Uh, it was the C64. I, I'm pretty sure it was. Yes, everyone, everyone's with Wally was on the Amstrad, and I think it was actually pretty good for what it was. Just checked on the CC, uh, CC Power website. Yep, yep, yep. Rock to 11, mate. How you doing? It's good to see you on an Amstream, my friend. Welcome. Another very talented coder as well here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, Rock to 11. Oh, man, my chat just re-scrolled itself. Uh, right, I think I know where I am now. Okay, okay. Nearly done with the greetings, guys. And we're going to kick things off very shortly. George Michel Michelakis as well. Welcome, welcome. How are you doing? Good evening from Greece. Hey, we've got someone from Greece tonight. Hey, George. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, my friends. Good to see you. Um, we also have scrolling through. If I'm, we have a yellow belly. Greetings, sir, yellow belly. Now also a coder of Amstrad games and working on his second game. Bridget 2 featuring myself, apparently. <laughs> I'm honoured. Deeply, deeply honoured, Phil. Thank you very, very much, Yellow Belly. Hey, it's about time you did... You played maybe your third game. You could enter it in the CPC Retro Dev, Phil. Have you thought about that? I'm sure Fran would be interested in a game from Yellow Belly. Uh, <laughs> Alan Sugis, Buenos Noches. Good evening, my friend. Welcome as well. Welcome back to the Amstream. It's good to see you again. Um... 
Right, nearly done with the greetings, guys. Mad Commodore, good evening, Mad Commodore. How you doing, my friend? Good to see you as always. Jimmy Taylor, hello, Jimmy. And hello to Jamie as well. Nice to see you. Oh, painting should be finished by the end of this weekend, Darren. Nice. How much are you selling it for, or are you keeping it? Oh, let's have a look. Hey, Mirko Ragovic. Good evening, Mirko. It's lovely to see you as well, my friend. Nice to see you on the Amstream. stream. How have you been, dude? Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, oh, I'm nearly done. I'm nearly done. Right, I'm nearly caught up with everyone. Oh, Mansion, well, sorry to hear you feeling a bit poorly, so he's going to be lurking. I hope it's not the dreaded C word again. Uh, but, um, mate, I hope, you're, uh, I hope you're doing okay. And we'll catch you back here in a little bit. No worries, my friend. Excuse me, pardon me. And Ginger Hippie Gaming 42 welcome to the stream. I believe this is your first time in the chat. I might be wrong. I, I forget names and stuff, but if everyone could tag Ginger Happy Gaming and give them a big am stream. Hello and welcome to the stream as well there. We like to welcome new people here tonight. Uh, yep, can do, although Game Free will be a multi-loader, so more than 64k. Oh, right. You've got to do two games next year, Yellow Belly. <laughs> um, the dreaded sea word is covered off, blimey. Well, I've done the greetings, guys. That's fantastic. Okay. Fran will be waiting uh, now. Let me uh, put the where's the sixty retro the logo and let me turn off my counter. What we'll do, Fran, just for five minutes, we'll fire up a random CPC retro dev game. Hmm. Which one should we just have a quick start off the stream with? Um, a short one. I tell you what. Let's uh, fire up the game that first. Uh, got me interested and, and I, I first noticed um, the uh, CPC Retro Dev from. This is from, I think, 2016. This is Outlaws um, for the CPC Retro Dev. So we're going to have a quick look at a game. Yeah, this was 2016. And Fran, I'll bring you in about five minutes, Fran, okay? I'll just message him in Discord as well. I just thought we'd start off with just a, just a game. Just get a juices flowing. And this is the quality that the CPC Retro Dev can, uh, can bring to everyone. Eight years of CPC Retro, it'll be a long night. Well, I won't be streaming for a long time tonight. Uh, we'll we'll um, try and just pick a selection of games that deserve some more spotlight, I think. And uh, Fran is going to help me with this as well. Ginger Hippie Gaming. Did I say happy? My apologies, Ginger. Welcome, my friend. Welcome, welcome. Right. Now, this was done by Tony Ramirez, who is still, still making Amstrad games to this day. Of course, he did the updated version of Space News earlier this year, which we did a full Amstream of. So, we're still making games in 2021. Hey! Greetings! Greetings, Novaborg. How are you doing, Chris? Nice to see you, my friend. Oh, Pi Gravity! Welcome, Pi Gravity! How are you doing? So, yeah, every Friday we do this stream on YouTube. It's been, it's been the, my original first stream, Pi Gravity, for the last three years. And I slowly started moving over to Twitch. So we keep this on a Friday on YouTube, all we other streams are on Twitch. So yeah, welcome Pike Gravity, nice to find you here tonight, mate. Um, and of course, Fran, who are we going to be interviewing? Oh, hang on, hang on, what's this? Cauldron 2 has donated two pounds. Give him, give him a dancing Lord Sugar. We have to get my phone open here to find out who that was. That. How many C64 fans does it take to change a light bulb? One to change it, one to have a big brown ploppy plop. <laughs> <laughs> Bananas in the chat. <laughs> For I think that was GP. That is definitely a that's definitely a GP dono. Thank you, GP. Bananas for GP. Get you none of that for GP there. <laughs> Alright, thank you. Thank you, GP. That made that. 
Bloods have a big brown blocky block. Good grief. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, Simmy! Good evening, Simmy! Welcome, my friends. Welcome, welcome. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. And uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of Cauldron too. There we go. Right, this is... Uh, Alright, sorry. We got distracted there. Right, this is Outlaws. Let's give it a go. This is Train Your Aim. And this was the winner... Uh, hang on, what's going on here? Okay. Ha! Sorry. Um, why is the joystick not working? Hang on. Uh, that's not right. Something went wrong there. Let me just check my settings here. What? What is that? Right, okay. Hang on. Select joystick. Hopefully this will this will work now. Hang on. Yay! Train your aim. So, this is kind of like uh, Cabal. A Nam 1975. Was that, was that the other game in the arcade? So it's a nice, you've got like, a, you can move about left and right. But as you move, you can move your uh, crosshair around the screen and shoot the bad guys. So this was the first winner of the, uh, uh, sorry, this was the winner of the CPC Retro 2016. Uh, everyone went, wow, that looks really, really cool. I did too. And that's when I first started looking at the CPC Retro dev. You have to shoot a certain number of enemies before you move on. I mean, this is highly impressive stuff, uh, certainly back in 2016. We have seen more adventure stuff since, but the graphics are gorgeous here. Lovely music on the title screen. This plays really nicely and really, really good fun. Oh, I got s shot there. Tomato sauce everywhere. Oh. oh, these have been a bit tricky, tricky now. Uh, this game is not easy by any stretch of imagination. Lovely presentation. It's like wild guns on the snares. Hey GP, how you doing, man? If you shoot these crates, they might reveal uh, extra armor and health or whatever it is. Sadly, nothing there on those two. Avoid the bullets there. Anything behind this one? No! No power up. What about this rock? Can you shoot this rock? You can! See, it's like it's nice you got destructible objects in the game as well. Oh, I got wrecked. Oh, there's a counter from the number of bad guys you've got to shoot at the bottom left there. It's on very, very uh, cabal like. Um, look at previous Wretched Dev games out. Yes! I should point out tonight, tonight I would not be looking at, talking about, or discussing, or showing any of the new CPC Retro Dev games. I've done things a little bit differently this year. All the games are being released early onto itch.io website. Um, and each one has their own little website there. And you can go and play them now if you want to. That's up to you. I would say wait until you see... Well your choice your choice obviously next friday is where the uh, they are on doing the judging ceremony and announcing the winners of the cpc retro 2021 and um, I, I will be on that live stream as one i'm one of the jur jurors on there so for me i have not even looked at any of the new games yet i've been tagged in a few things on twitter and i've just tried to delete the conversation and, and ignore it so i want to go into the games fresh i'm going to go into the i'm going to download them all and play them all through on sunday and monday and I want to go in with like a fresh mind and fresh pair of eyes and ears and mind on each of them and judge them fairly. So I will not be playing any of the new games tonight. So I just wanted to make that very clear. I should have said that at the start, actually. But seeing as we've got most, most of the people here now, I'm nearly on 60 people watching. I thought it's probably a good time to say that. So next week's Amstream, we will be looking at all the CC Retro Dev 2021 games. From the winner down to last place. So yeah, yeah. I've got some lag. Tessel. We did have we did have uh, we did have things drop there. That was my end. Because that time I got warning lights and, and uh, all, all sorts of stuff going there. Is it okay now guys? Can you see my hands moving about? Is are my hands lagging? I know the chat's about 30 seconds to a minute almost kind. So you may need to refresh. You may need to refresh. 
Uh, may need to refresh stream. Okay. Put that in the chat. Blurring. Should be okay now. Right, I've got a preview of the stream. I'm watching it right now and it doesn't look like it's lagging for me. You waited till the after the results to play them. Good man. Uh, yeah, no better, yeah. Kicking the kids off the computer soon. Yeah, the quality's gone down. Um, so, I definitely had, a, definitely had a blip at my end, but now I'm on full um, upstream, green light, maximum rate. And I'm looking at the preview of the stream on from YouTube, and it looks like smooth as anything. So are we okay? Because I'm about to bring uh, Fran in for, for the interview in a second. Seems to be okay now. Looks all right now. God, I hate, I hate when this happens. It gets me all nervous. Obviously, we don't want to keep Fran up too late because he's an hour ahead of us. So it's like gone half ten at his time. So full beams. Full beams here now. Thank you, Craig. Hey, OJBs. Welcome. Andy H. Welcome to the stream as well, my friend. How are you both doing? And yes, and when I was doing the greeting, guys, if I missed anyone, uh, please say hello again in the chat. And if I missed any important messages, feel free to repeat them now before um, I uh, go and talk to Fran. These are tending to be on YouTube after the glitch in the Quad 360 didn't automatically go back. Mmm, okay, yeah. Yeah, you have to send it to Auto. Auto should have dropped it automatically and then it should have come back, but mmm, okay. okay. Right. Right, okie dokie, I think we're good. I think we are good to move on. Fingers. Okay, short frames, I'll be back. Reconnection successful. It may, it actually dropped the connection. I don't know if it's my end or YouTube's end. We should be back. Right, refresh, Re I'll put refresh in the chat. Oh, this is a, this is annoying. I'm so sorry guys. Um. Damn it, we're like, we lost over like 12, 13 viewers now. Um, but it happens. Uh, it might be people refreshing and stuff. So we should be back. Should be back. Right. But a few drop frames there as well. But I think we're good now. Okay. Hey, Big Joffa. Welcome, Big Joffa. I don't know if it's YouTube's end. I think this is YouTube. I think this is YouTube. Right, okay. If you can hear me now and see me, right, refresh. I'm going to say I think this is actually uh, YouTube. Uh, because my chat window keeps uh, disconnecting. Right. Uh, lag again. Let me uh, check something. And my end will be right back. I'm back guys, um, it's certainly not anything like, like <laughs> just been upstairs to check on the kids to make sure they're not downloading something stupid or whatever. Um, they're not, um, it looks like we're back again. Um, hmm, move to Twitch, can't really do that now. Um, too much to set up to switch it over. Um, in an absolute emergency we could. Is either Virgin Media, they dropped frames there. It's like a Virgin Media or it's YouTube. I don't know. Don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Let me just do a test of something. Let me just do a test of something. And I'll just message Fran as well. Sorry about this uh, lag problem. 
I don't want to get too late for Fran as well, which would be an annoying. Uh, let's see what's going on here. I'm just running some tests, guys. You won't be able to see it on the screen and stuff, but just bear, just bear with me a minute here. Hmm. No, 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 no. I would not do that, OJBs, while streaming. That would be a very bad thing to do. I think config release. No, 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 no. Um. Hmm. Upload speed is not great, but it's, it's it's still tons better than I used to have uh, when I was first streaming, and uh, we did streams fine uh, in the same settings as well. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think I think what's happening is either it's either YouTube or uh, Virgin Media are just randomly dropping. Yeah, I've got some more drop frames there. Damn it. Uh, Walden, good evening, Walden. Uh, sorry about this, guys. See, I, uh, if I bring Fran in for an interview, he starts dropping throughout it. You're going to miss chunks of the interview. That's that's my only worry. Um, hmm. I reckon it's Virgin. Uh, it seems to be a little bit more stable. Okay, so Fran, um, I'm gonna say, give, give, give it five mins. Looks like it's calming down. I'm just sending you a message. Looks like it's calming down. Hope that's okay. So we will give it like five minutes before we bring Fran in and just make sure we're kind of like back to normal. Every now and again, you know, you have these blips with Virgin Media or YouTube and yeah because if we start we start the interview and it's all you, you can't hear half of what you're saying it's pointless interview then um, my friend build you up this is happening I know it's looking at oh, I had a few drop frames just then right what we'll do, just let, uh, we'll just carry on a little bit of uh, Outlaws, just so you've got something to watch and talk about, <laughs> rather than bloody stream problems. Oh, we actually died there. See if it stabilises. It looks like, it's looking like a little bit better. Right. Cardinal Knight, welcome to the stream. Acorn election all the way, bless. <laughs> we do like a bit of beeb on the acorn here. And you'll find there will be one or two BBC micro owners in this chat now. My body P is still okay. Uh, you should be able to put it up a bit. The guy in the window there. shot there yeah you don't you, you don't need to be stuck in 144p guys definitely not oh my god i got killed there I'm not doing very well here sorry Let's see if that rock reveals anything no hey i'm at 360 streaming well so are we looking a bit better now guys one Looking at how many. Oh. Actually, no more drop. We haven't done any drop frames for a while either. So, so this, this is looking much better. BBC Master, please, I buy him standards. Oh, and an elk. <laughs> Good stuff, dude. I think Rob Berry in the chat. He's got a BBC, haven't you? Stream is fine at 1080p now. So just leave it on auto if you uh, if you fiddle around with those kind of settings on YouTube. And uh, if there's a problem, it will drop it down automatically. Should should bring it back up there. So we should be fine in 1080p, guys. I've got, I'm watching it in a preview as well, and all all seems good my end. Right. 
So I think we'll put the three things there on Outlaws. Sorry if I missed any important chat messages there during the whole <laughs> palaver. I think we should be good. I, th uh, I think we should bring Fran in now. I've had any drop frames in a long while. Oh, hang on. <laughs> green light just changed to a slightly lighter green. Slight blip. But it does do that throughout the stream, even when it's like normally good. You're not going to get like a perfect upload rate throughout the stream, 100%. Um, and if it is, it's fine now. Hey, Mame Haze. Good evening, Mame Haze. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. I think we're good. So what we'll do then... I think it's time to bring Fran in. Let me just put the music down just a touch. Yeah, I think we should chance it now. I think we should. One second, guys. Let me just check something. We should be good. I think we should be good. Let me, uh, let me just come out of this. Okay, that's good. I'll pause that. Ah, right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'll just put a ready message there for Fran. Okay. And we shall uh, we'll go and get Fran in for an interview. Let's see. Are we in the right place? Yep. Yep, 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 yep. And I'll just put down the music just a touch more. Really quietly in the background. Bit of atmosphere. Oh, God, it's hard to do. Isn't it? Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Right. Okay. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, we are now going to talk to Professor Francisco Galigo uh, of the uh, University of Alicante. And the guy who started the CPC Retro Dev and has continued to curate it over the last eight or so plus years. We're about to have the CPC Retro Dev 2021 next week. And I think, yeah, I think we should be ready. Right, hang on then. Let's just get my uh, capture ready. And uh, let's go in and let's see if we can talk to Fran. And here we go. And good. Hello, Fran. Can you hear me okay? Oh, I think we're just making some uh, set changes, some settings there. No problem. Can you hear me okay, Fran? Uh, I think I can hear you now. Oh, excellent. We can hear you and we can see you. Okay. Nice. Hello, everyone. Hey. Can everyone hear Fran okay? Do I need to turn up his volume okay? Um, is is it, it right? I need to to raise it up or anything? No, I think we, we can see you perfectly. I think I can hear you perfectly as well. Here, here, hello. Okay, excellent. What I do, I just put the music down nice. a tiny touch more. There we go, right. So everyone should, should be able to hear Fran. Excellent, excellent. So where do we start? So, so Fran, welcome to the Amstream, and of course, as you've seen so far, tonight is all about celebrating everything that is the CPC Retro Dev, and well, you're the, of course the perfect guest, because you're the head of it. So, um, first of all, how are you doing this evening, Fran? Thank you so much for joining us. How are things going today? Well, thank you very much to you. I'm, I'm really happy to be here, and, and please, as always, excuse me for my... <laughs> never practiced English. I, I need to warm up a little bit because I, I'm always writing and reading English but not speaking. <laughs> so please be patient Fran, with me. Fran, your English is brilliant, my friend. It is, well, it's far, far, far better than my Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Well, I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna come out and say this, Fran, okay? So bear with me. I have a, for me, right, I have a feeling that the CPC Retro Dev is kind of responsible for kickstarting a lot of the Amstrad homebrew scene to a much higher degree than it was previously over the last sort of five or so years. And, you know, without that, the CPC Retro Dev, we might not have seen a lot of projects outside of the competition being made and released. So in, in essence, Fran, I could say 
Um, you are one of the main reasons we as Amstrad fans have to be thankful for. You're a big part of that. Did you ever imagine it would get as big as it is? Well, I, I, I'm uh, <laughs> really happy to to um, to know that more, more many people think like this and and to be part of the community. But I I always say that that, that it's not the CP server to dev. Um, maybe if if CP server to dev had never existed, another thing would have existed in in his place. But uh, the games and all the stuff is made by by the people who make the games, not by CP server to dev. So I think uh, it's a combination of of the um, developers and and the people in the community that like the games because developers need to show their games to the people and if if no one was uh, paying attention to the games no developers would develop anything so cps reto dev is just just another channel and maybe we we had luck uh, when we organized the the contest it, maybe it was the right time to do the thing so I think it's, it's just something that happened more or less by itself. Uh, it's, it doesn't matter I think, if it I was think you are me honest. or not. <laughs> no, I think I think it, really I what because you're saying. I agree, I agree, I do. Yeah, maybe, you maybe know, somebody else uh, would have been there, but you were there. You you were the you were the one that started it. No one else did it before you, really. So you know, we have that to be. You have that to be proud of. Um, but I do genuinely, yeah. I do genuinely think it has encouraged a lot more people uh, to look at the Amstrad scene and look at the what the games are coming out and encourage them to like start producing their own ones. I mean, man, no, don't worry. I really hope this doesn't happen next week for you and me. <laughs> <laughs> right, I would. Well, I think we are back. I think we are back. So let me just put a message in the chat because people might not see it. It's, uh, I'll, I'll just say refresh. People need to refresh their streams. So if this happens to you next week on YouTube, <laughs> just type a message in the chat saying refresh because some people just sit there with the screen like uh, stalled or whatever and you need to like refresh and reload. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're yeah, back I, again. I... We're back again. Fantastic. Sorry about this. Yeah. So yeah, that was a big that was a big question for me to ask. I mean, it was like a not really. There were several questions in there, really. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but we are very very thankful for you, Fran. And, and I know you're a very modest man. So I just wanted to sort of start off there. Um, before we get to the CPC Retro Dev itself, um, uh, let's 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 find out a little a little bit about yourself. I mean, um, first of all, um, let me make sure I got these these details right. So. so you are a professor at the University of Alicante uh, yeah. in computing and engineering information. Oh, no, but we discussed this <laughs> earlier. That's wrong, isn't it? Sorry. Well, it, it doesn't matter. It's because uh, <laughs> they are similar terms. Yes. Ah, right. So, yeah. So um, what, what what is it you're officially teaching, uh, lecturing on there? Sorry. I mean, I'm teaching uh, mainly two subjects. Uh, one is video games one uh, in the multimedia degree, multimedia engineering degree. And the other one is automatic reasoning in in the computer engineering degree. I'm, 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 I'm also the the coordinator of, of the mathematics one in the first year. The other ones are fourth years. Excellent. And you also um, spent many years doing a doctorate to get to where you are, didn't you, as well? Yeah, you need to to be, you need to finish your PhD if you want to be a university teacher. Uh, what was your doctorate in, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, my, my doctorate was um, in machine learning and artificial intelligence applied to to a student learning because uh, al almost all uh, everything I do is focused on on uh, innovative methodologies for teaching and those things and I'm quite focused on on how I can help students to learn better learn more learn faster those things so I I'm computer scientist and computer engineer but I try to apply all my knowledge in in this way 
Excellent, fantastic. So, in your early years, did you have a computer or console growing up? Was it the Amstrad, the first one? Or... Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was the four six four. Yeah, it was the four six four, and it arrived to me when I was eight years old. Oh, same for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so nothing else. So, so growing up, it was like the Amstrad CPC four six four all the way through up to like. Uh, an Amiga Atari ST or a PC after that or after the the Amstrad it was uh, a PC I I was eight years with the Amstrad <laughs> <laughs> me too I was I was still using the Amstrad when I was 16 doing my coursework for college uh, and stuff on it whilst everyone was on their Amigas yeah. or PCs I stuck with it I stuck with it like yourself so we all we are very much alike there. <laughs> yeah, um, so... it's a long time uh, playing with BASIC. <laughs> well, we had excellent word, uh, word processors and things like that on the Amstrad. So, yeah. Um, so, yes, uh, did you, uh, I mean, during all that time with the Amstrad uh, growing up a bit, did you ever want to become part of the games industry and make games for the Amstrad? Was that a, a career that you wanted to pursue yourself? Yeah, that was my original intention when I started the university. Yeah, before before entering the university, I was focused on developing games and going to to a career in in game dev industry. And I just changed uh, my mind in when I finished uh, my career because my. Uh, um, my supervisor of the final project uh, introduced me to to teaching and to the university, the PhD, researching and those things. And I enjoyed and I stayed. And so that was the, the reason for me to stay at the university. Yeah. I, I never thought of being a, a professor. Uh, just it, it, it came along. I, sure. I find it in the way. So I, I was just uh, focused on games, but I, I use my, my knowledge of game developing and computer engineering now to make others learn how to make games. And I'm, I'm happy with it because uh, that has become my second passion. <laughs> my first one is games. My second one is, is making my students be better engineers. That's wonderful. I mean, we were both, both myself and yourself, were, we, we were too late to um, get a career in making Amstrad games. By the time we were 16, <laughs> they were no longer being sold in shops and stuff anyway. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You could have been, who knows, you could have been making PC games at some point. Yeah. Did you make any Amstrad games yourself growing up? So could you tell us anything about the games you made? <laughs> can you re can you remember that far back? Yeah, yeah, I I made uh, games in basic uh, when I when I was young. I I had uh, plenty of difficulties to to get uh, information to go beyond basic. Uh, I I started to know uh, about uh, assembly and pro C programming and those things more, more or less when I was fifteen to sixteen. Yeah. So most of the time was uh, developing in basic and doing uh, the most I, I could. And when I started uh, with Assembler and, and C, that was for PC. Yeah. I started in the, in the X, in X86 and, and then I was progressively leaving uh, the CPC because I was focusing on the university and doing things for PC and i return later to to the amster yeah yeah like me yeah <laughs> yes i was i was making games in basic up till about 14 15 and i started learning a little bit about machine code and stuff but uh by then it was time to move on to pcs and but but i i have all in all, almost all of the games i did i have all of them in my cassettes and and i still can load them Fantastic. Yeah, I found all my old discs like a few years ago and they were still working. So I very quickly dumped them. So hopefully you've got backups as well. And uh, maybe yep. you might see them at some point. 
Yeah, yeah, we we can show them in the future if you like. Fantastic, that's that's a future stream there. That is excellent. Um, so um, we talked about where you you got to university and you were sort of steered onto a certain path there. Um, so you made the decision. At what point did you just make make the decision? I'm going to become a teacher. I'm going to. I, I would like to teach this, and then. Well, it it was kind of progressive because I I started as a researcher. Yeah, mm -hmm. and when I finished uh, my career, my degree, and I started doing research in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and and games. Oh, fascinating stuff, AI. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I I did uh, some kind of. Uh, first prototypes of, of automatic driving. Wow. Yeah, but that was so far ago. <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's been many years Why from isn't that. Why is Elon hiring you, Fran? <laughs> <laughs> because what I did was was uh, was not like now. It was uh, early stuff with uh, much, much less computational uh, capacities and yeah. it was kind of first prototypes and it's it's quite different from now right. it has evolved a lot a lot <laughs> fantastic so yeah so you then you went on to do your doctorate and you so you sort of specialized in ai machine learning throughout that how many uh, if, if that's correct how many years did you work on your doctorate phd for well i it was discontinued because i i started i worked like two years mm -hmm. And after that, uh, we had an opportunity in the university because I started as teacher and I and we also had, um, we were given a couple of projects, uh, serious games, in it, uh, making a team of people, developers to make uh, serious games to teach um, that was creative abilities and learning abilities, and we started developing. And that was the the first time we um, we registered the trademark by Realms, uh, which is yeah that that trademark is is property of the University of Alicante, and we were the first university in Spain to have a, a trademark, uh, especially to to develop games. So we started and that uh, that led me to stop my PhD and be it was kind of three to five years uh, working as a teacher and as um, the team lead of the developers that we had there to develop those games. Excellent. And after that I finished my my PhD. Wow. Awesome. And then you were off the position at the university, I assume. Right after. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So, of course, um, so we've now got up to the point of where you're now teaching at the university. Um, at what point did you think, uh, hmm, I'll start teaching my students on the Amstrad CPC. Did you, like, bring it into a, uh, a lesson or a lecture one day and then realise, oh, I could do something useful with this with my students? Or... Um, they wasn't used part of the coursework before the CPC Retro Dev became a thing. How did how did the Amstrad come into lecture lecture life? University? Well, the Amstrad, the Amstrad and the CPC Retro Dev came came together because yeah. uh, when I was teaching my students uh, during those three to five years that I was uh, developing games and leading the team of developers. I was teaching already automatic reasoning, like now. Mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't a multimedia degree then, uh, so I wasn't teaching video games one, just uh, automatic reasoning. And I was uh, uh, having some some troubles um, trying to make my student understand my students understand uh, some high level stuff in programming and in artificial intelligence. And I was uh, starting to to ask me what was the origin of of their problems, and I I started doing interviews with them, 
trying to do some research mm -hmm. in the origins of this um, of these problems and i found that the origin of the problems were was more or less in the foundations of their knowledge okay so i i found that the most of the time when you start at the university nowadays uh, there are many things that are kind of overlooked like for instance programming low level stuff uh, assembly those things are kind of this is unneeded let's start in something uh, higher yes, yes so agree. when when you overlook those things they they don't uh, they don't become voids in your knowledge they they are not something that you don't care and you don't need yes uh, your your brain needs an explanation of how uh, a computer works right. and yes. how yes. how everything works uh, behind the scenes and if you don't receive a proper explanation and a proper uh, structure on how all those things work uh, it becomes like similar to religion you you don't know if, if you are a man 20,000 years ago you see the sun coming and you say oh that must be a god or something similar <laughs> so you you build your own explanations yes. that are just from experience and most of those explanations are incorrect uh, uh, yes, and, analogy. Yes. Yes. and then i i thought well this cannot be this way because this is in this is um stopping me from making them learn higher things because is is the foundations are 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 moving and if i yes. put uh, a, a block more then everything falls yes. down yes exactly yeah just... so i i decided to go to the foundations and then i i was thinking how to go to the foundations and to go to these foundations i i thought i need a uh, a, a way to make them learn uh, assembly programming to make uh, touch everything from the ground up and that I, I i have to do it in some weeks like now more more or less seven eight weeks so for that i will need a simple machine i i cannot go in in nowadays pcs because they are too complex so I, I need a, a smaller machine and everything came perfect so that's smaller good. machine assembly yeah. okay that's that's my amstrad just out the amstrad <laughs> bring it in yes <laughs> and the cpc reto dev uh, came out naturally because uh, one of my uh, my way of my ways of teaching is trying to make my students do uh, do things for the actual real world not not for not not for my their teacher myself or uh, if, if if they have to to do a project and and just uh, give it to me it's like making something to to put it in a box or or, uh, or yes yes absolutely yeah it, that that doesn't make them uh, focus properly on creating something actually useful or, or something that other people will use so i i try to create as well yeah Friendly, yeah that, that's also uh, that's something that they put that they can put in their curricula so um i created the contests as a way to make them motivate to create uh, things a game for for actual users, for people that will play the game, and uh, a contest by itself, if if it is located just at the university, is not enough. They need to compete with mm. actual people, with actual developers, and everything came out natural. Fantastic! It's it's, it's a it's a brilliant idea, Fran. It really is. Um, I mean, I I, I went through a computing. A uh, degree at university as well, and um, you know, I, I think I've told this story before on your CPC Retro Dev stream. Not to put down my lecturers, they were great lecturers, they were fine. But you know, I, I did a computing course with like 3D graphics, and I was like, brilliant, this could be my way into the industry, the film industry, where like 
Disney, Pixar, mm. and DreamWorks was all taken off. And I think all I have to show for it is a, a cube, a 3D cube that spins around the screen with some lighting and shading bouncing off it. I'm like, like, no, I don't think Disney and Pixar are going to become knocking on my door if I show them that, <laughs> you know. So I don't really have much to show from it. And I, I was never really that engaged in a lot of the coursework and the projects there. I mean, of course, being an Amstrad fan, of course, I'd be engaged with an Amstrad CPU. <laughs> but I think anything, if it was um, Spectrum Retro Dev or C64 Retro Dev, it's it, whatever computer you 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 found a genius way of getting of getting those students engaged and understanding the fundamentals and getting their hands dirty, as we say in the UK, with yeah. low level computing, and have something to take away from it. They could take away and say, "I've made a game. I've completed it." I did the graphics, the music, we've got the full product, you know, it's on a website now, and they, they will have that to keep with them the rest of their life. So that's a very, very cool thing as well, yeah. So well done. Yeah, and, and, and I could have used uh, any other simple computer. It could have been a Spectrum, it could have been an, an Atari 2600, uh, it could have been a, a Game Boy. <laughs> the, the Game Boy would have been really nice for them because all of them know the Game Boy. Uh, but uh, they they ask me most of the time, why did you pick the Amstrad? And that's it's logical. That's because it's my computer, and <laughs> it, it in that sense, that's a, uh, it's, it's not because of, of I'm um, I'm just playing for myself. Is is because if I use a, the Amstrad. I will be more passionate than, than if I use a ZX Spectrum because that was my computer. And you know it well, of course, as well. You need to be able to teach it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of like my follow-up question, actually. Actually, we've gone ahead of it slightly. <laughs> Just like, why did you think the Amstrad was the ideal tool rather than, say, like the Commodore or Spectrum or MSX or whatever? Yeah, all, all of them are nice. And if I had more time, uh, I would love to to use all of them. Maybe uh, a master system, a NES, or uh, everything. All of all of them are, are really nice, and and each one has its own its own capabilities, in its own pros and cons. And students could learn a lot from the different computers and and the different um, systems. Uh, but we we have seven to eight weeks we we cannot do more <laughs> <laughs> indeed yeah but I, I i was wondering if you'd actually say something like i'm not trying to put words in your mouth but i always found the uh, the amstrad an excellent just machine it, it, just for coding on um with all the tools available for it it was a very robust machine it was it was quite quick and easy to understand you had an excellent manual that came with the machine to start with that um, as a seven, eight year old boy, I read from cover to cover and I could understand it. You know, it was written in, you know, language you could understand. But going going forward, like, I mean, I remember having Maxam, the assembler for his, doing his machine coding. Um, I had ROMs that were plugged into the back of the machine for coding, you know, and I, I don't think you get something as good on the spectrum in terms of like the setup of the Amstrad. Would you would you sort of agree with that, or are, am I just too biased being a, an Amstrad fan? Well, we 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 cannot uh, um, we we cannot be completely neutral. It, we are biased, <laughs> but but I agree that the um, the Amstrad CPC uh, was thought more of a professional machine. Mm -hmm. um, well, it, it's it's normal because the ZX Spectrum came from the idea of being uh, of of trying to be uh, achievable uh, in in terms of cost uh, mm -hmm. for for almost everyone. It it was more like the the 100 laptop uh, of the era. Yeah, you know so. It was something similar, so it, it was not thought uh, the same way as the Amstrad. Even that the Amstrad also had his his, his own difficulties in the development uh, yes. that, yes. that were not. It was not not thought as a perfect machine, it, it, and we could have had an Amstrad with a 6502 if it, if it was it would have uh, yeah, been it developed as last, it was thought. Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wish we had chips for hardware scrolling and hardware sprites and all that. 
we could have a wish list as long as you want, really. But uh, <laughs> it, it is good for its time. So when you, uh, I, I'm curious actually, friends. So you kind of touched on this. So when you first brought an Amstrad into the classroom, what was what was some of your students' reactions to it? They're like, were they <laughs> kind of like, wow, this is cool, or like, what is this old pile of crap here, or were they kind of <laughs> Were they kind of ex some of them excited? Were some of them a little bit reluctant? Like, kind of, oh, I don't know about this, but, but what, what were some of their reactions like? I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, it more or less, they, they can the second option is more or less, what, what's this? Uh, are you kidding me? Are we, are we re actually going to program that thing? So it's more or less. They, they, they didn't know the Amstrad. Occasionally, in some years, one of my students or two uh, has a parent that used the Amstrad and they had one in, in their homes and they know the computer, but mostly they don't know what, what the Amstrad is and they have to learn from zero. Were, they, were most of them aware of, oh, I, I've, I've seen pictures of this, or like my parents have done it, were most of them aware of what the amp, this is an Amstrad? Or had some of them never even heard of it before? Most of them have never even heard really? of it. Really? Right, right. I thought that, um, I mean, the Amstrad and Spectrum in Spain in the 1980s, early 90s, they were quite dominant computers, weren't they? Yeah, so, they were. Right, right. You would have thought that kind of you, kids, <laughs> young students would kind of like have that knowledge of like, oh, I, 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 I've heard of that computer, but a lot of them haven't. That was inter That's interesting. Well, um, actually, we we still don't have um, uh, any subject on on computer history that that teaches recent, say, mm -hmm. uh, computer history. Yeah, that would be uh, that would be a nice like um, module as we call it over here. As Could be nice. Course. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so um, uh, actually, I'm going to skip over a couple of questions I've written down here because you kind of already covered them. So just bear with me a second. Um, ah, yes. I, I was kind of in, also intrigued about this. How did like your um, coll work colleagues or even seniors at the university react? your idea of bringing Amstrad's in, in the uh, doing a competition so the uh, university the people that run the university were they receptive were they skeptical or have they been very supportive I know well, in that sense yeah in, in that sense I've, I've been very very lucky because I I'm part of a team of people that, that are really confident on me they they sometimes see me as kind of a freak, but but they <laughs> they they see me in that way, but but they in part love me that way, you know, it's just yeah. kind of. Yeah. So I I'm very lucky because I could have been in a, another team or another university that I could have had the same idea and, and being just put down. The, you can do that. So that wasn't the case, and I have had a lot of help because people uh, around me has been always helpful. My university has been always helpful. Um, all the universities in Spain had a lot of paperwork to do, but that's part of the work. Uh, in the most of the part is, is people that is helpful and. And that's the reason why CPC RetroDev exists, because I could have had the idea and had no opportunity to the de to develop it. Yes. And I I know for a fact that that other other colleagues in in different universities have tried uh, similar ideas or in the oh. same way or spectrum, and and most of them hadn't had a proper opportunity to to develop the ideas. All oh, right. Right. You know, there's there's been a lot of Hollywood movies over the years where there's like a pioneering teacher who's trying to teach the kids in a different um, way that goes against the rules of the school or the college or university. I was, I was wondering if there's anything juicy there. We could turn you into a Hollywood movie one day or something. Yeah. Well, I I I know that the things I do uh, are not against the rule, but they are quite 
different from yes. what most of the, of the teachers do. But that's not because I'm special, but uh, at the university, normally, uh, what the university drives us to do, I mean teachers uh, from the staff, is to, to focus on research and just tr uh, treat our, uh, our lessons as part of the things we have to do while we do research. You know, so that's that. Our career is focused on on what we publish in in research uh, journals and those things. Yeah. So most of the teachers are completely focused on that. That because the system is is designed as such, mm -hmm. and uh, it's quite uh, rare to to be um, so interested in teaching like like me and. Um, in part is is also uh, the mood of my colleagues because in my group uh, we are um, a group called smart learning and that's because we are focused on smart ways to to make uh, students learn and we have changed uh, in change our focus from actual computer engineering to applied computer engineering in the sense of of focusing it on learning. So we are doing everything around our teaching stuff. And Hi. that was the, the the lucky part of the of the story because I entered this group, I knew this group and and as I'm doing kind of innovative things, they they were helping me even if they didn't understand them properly or didn't they, they thought oh, I, I would prefer another way but if this is your way go that way <laughs> excellent well it's great you've done that and i admire your passion there and it's nice to see you've been inspiring other other lecturers at other universities as you said a few minutes ago so that's fantastic um well I, it is not me is that others i know i i have had similar ideas and we have discussed them because we oh, okay uh, yeah. we talk and no, it's, it's not my inspiration. Is that more or less that they have, they had no opportunity, and they uh, they yeah. see me and oh, I try to, but uh, you are lucky. In it. They they are right. I'm I'm completely yeah. lucky. So you've had great support from the university. Really good to yeah. hear. Excellent. So, um, so when they get the students come to uh, make their games, uh, what tools are given to the students to actually make them, like for the coding, graphics, and sounds? If you could just give us a quick summary on that. And... Well, uh, with the tools, um, first the first year I I did CPC RetroDev, uh, we we went with the tools uh, there were in just in the internet. So we we used uh, CPC CPC Dev Toolchain, what that was made by. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it in English, but it's Sepesito Se or something similar. Okay. Uh, it's a, a French. It's a French teacher also that that teaches a, in a French university oh, right. that developed oh. this framework, and we use the framework and also the um, the library, which is uh, CPC RS Lib, which is from Raúl Simarro from Spain. Uh, yeah. That was what we were using first and second year, uh, but uh, the first and second year I I saw my students invest most of the time in setting up the environment because uh, everything was spread and you have to pick the tools from here and there and make them work together mm -hmm. and you have to configure everything and that uh, was most of the part because they, they took uh, some time. weeks to wow. do that yeah yeah so that that led me to start uh, developing cpc telera that's your thing right yeah uh, because cpc telera wasn't at the start a uh, kind of my idea for saying it that way it was more or less that uh, there are a lot of tools here and there and I I need a way to put all of them together to be set up in advance for the students just to install it and start working. Yes. So that that was the idea. Wow. 
And wants to pick everything and don't make them uh, go with the paperwork of the programming stuff. Gotcha. Yes. Yes. And now lots of people outside of the uh, competition using uh, C C Telera to make their games as well. That's that. That yeah. makes me very happy about that too. Yeah, of course I'm happy, but I'm I'm always telling the same that if you look at the of the credits of CPC Telera. Uh, there are more than a hundred authors because oh, it's yeah. it's a collaborative project then. Yeah, that, that's because I I picked everything that was already made by others. So it's it's not me. Uh, there are parts that are mine, but uh, most of the part is is the work of the community. That that's the way. That's why I was uh, telling you that that uh, maybe I was the the one that that initiated this, mm -hmm. but. Uh, but everything was there so it's, it's it's a work a collaborative work of all the community and and most of the time i'm telling that the amstad community is a really nice community because i i'm in contact with other communities and some of the other communities are more are, sometimes they fight and sometimes yes. they yes. They have some all, some other internal aware. problems, <laughs> so I think that the Amstad community is, is growing in, in a really nice way, and all the people is is happy to collaborate ones with others, yeah, and there are very, not, not very many problems. Community, yeah. I'm not going to mention certain other communities on other systems, but I think a lot of us here in the chat have experienced um, some negativity and toxicity in other communities that doesn't really seem to be present at all in the Amstrad one so uh, I think it's a very welcoming and supportive environment collaborative as you said but also welcoming and supportive for new games you know like from your students no one's yeah. saying mean things about that your students games we're all here to support each other and we're very appreciative of new games we don't get that many I yeah. suppose as well that, that yeah. that's really really nice of all of you and and really important for them because you know they 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 invest seven weeks to do a game starting from not knowing what the amstad is so wow. yeah actu weeks, actually yeah. Is yeah. yeah that's impressive most yeah, mo most of the projects you know because you have been uh, several years in with us in in the um, TPC Retro Dev, and some of the games uh, end up as as just a pre prototype of the games. It's, it's, they they uh, sometimes are not able to develop their ideas. Uh, enough to be actual games yes. but that's part of, of learning some of them uh, need to uh, need to tweak their knowledge more than others and seven weeks is is not enough for them so they they fail to achieve the final goal of of, high, of having a proper game but that's part of the game itself the, the game of learning i mean yeah yeah absolutely and of course, is I mean most. I mean all the all the games I've experienced. I mean they've been some. I mean some of the some of the games at the lower end of the results or whatever. They've still been finished games. You know they are complete. You know a part of the problem that a lot of coders have is starting a project and then getting to the end of it. There's so many of us coders out there that will start something and then we never finish it. We never see it through to the end. So. But at least your students, they, they are finishing the games, they have start and ends, they have the music, the title screen, the, the gameplay may not be the great, greatest in the world, but they have a finished product and that's I think that's important as well. Yeah, yeah, that's important and, and over the years we've been finding ways to to guide them to to achieve more and I'm quite happy with, with what they do because they, they learn a lot of things, even if their final product uh, not always is what they want it, it to be. Mm -hmm. But but even so, they learn a lot of things and they they get more um, aware of, of the importance of those things. Yeah. Uh, later on, when when I, I continue teaching them uh, higher level stuff in C++, in PC, and I continuously make reference of you know this, so we learned in Amstrad this, this is this, and yeah. I, I start <laughs> making them understand the stuff behind the scenes, yes. and and they see the importance of everything. Fantastic. 
fantastic. Talking of that, uh, talking of similar thing here, yeah, um, going back to artificial intelligence and one of the, the sort of the reason really why the CPT RetroChef came about and, and tried to teach stu students the, the basics of computing. I mean, AI in Amstrad games is one of, if not the hardest thing to code, in probably my opinion, I might be wrong, but I think you're probably right there. Uh, given its complexity and challenges are given us usually so little free memory available after you've done everything else in the game, graphics, whatever. Um, when it comes to teaching your students AI in their Amstrad games, how do you go about it? The uh, the main problem of artificial intelligence in in games in Amstrad uh, it's it's not the technology itself. The um, the main problem is the game design. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, the the games they design don't require artificial intelligence. Oh, okay. And right. and if if you fail to to design a game that actually needs artificial intelligence and you try to insert artificial intelligence, uh, the results are not great. Right. Actually, they, they, they are far worse than putting just simple characters that go from left to right and from up to down. Yes, yes. That, that, that happened. Yes. See, imagine most of the time I, I discuss this with the students because some of them, for instance, come with ideas like I'm going to make a, a shooter with, with some ships and I want the, the enemy ships to, to dodge your, mm -hmm. uh, your shots. Yes. And then I, and then I tell them, well, if, if the enemies dodge your shots, how are you going to beat them? Mm -hmm. Because if they, if they know how to dodge your shots, they will be impossible to beat. Yes. So you, you have no game, because the game must be challenging for the user, but not impossible for the user. If you create an enemy that is unbeatable, and it's not so uh, difficult to make unbeatable enemies. It, most of the time it's easy to do that. Yes. But that that's not the goal, because you, you'll end up with no game. And also, most of, most of them, uh, the first enemies they they design are the enemies that uh, follow you perfectly. Mm -hmm. So when when you have three or four enemies that follow you perfectly, there is no game. And that's that's not uh, that's not something I say. If you go and and look at what Toru Iwatami said when when he did Pac-Man. Uh, he said exactly that. He said, "If I, I if I were to make my enemies yes. uh, chase you all the time, that would be too stressing, and there was no, there will be no option for the uh, player to escape, and that that would be no game at all." Yes. So, yes. so he designed uh, Pac-Man ghosts to come in waves. Yes. They, they chase you during a little bit of time, and they scatter to their uh, to their four corners don't they one will i think yeah. one of them sort of always sort of follows you another one will just go in a set pattern another one uh if it comes near you then it will start i i, I can't remember all of it but yeah a few a few people yeah, in the yeah. chat will probably remember like joffa in the chat there probably knows but yes, yes yeah that's, that's, a, that's an excellent example there the essence of AI starts at the very, very beginning in the game design, essentially. Yeah, yeah, because uh, and the problem when when you design AI for Amstrad is that your game design in Amstrad uh, most of the time is constrained because the machine is so small. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, you cannot design, for instance, uh, the next Call of Duty, in, and you cannot design a Skyrim game. So you're forced to to some a little bit of screens not you cannot think most of the time of uh, of great towns or uh, like, like like something you would do in a gta uh, people that is going up and down even if you are not seeing them so you're forced to smaller patterns and designing uh, and challenging an AI with uh, 
with a reduced uh, area where you play and a smaller pattern is, is quite challenging, the design, not the technology. <laughs> then you can, you can go for the technology and use different technologies once you have a design that actually requires a technological AI. Yes, I find, I find this fascinating. So I, I, yeah, I love anything to do with AI. But um, can you, pre is there a, a game, a, an example, a game made by one of your students that you've gone, that has had some form of AI that you've been impressed with, perhaps, that we might look at later. This might actually be something we're all really going to talk about later anyway. But... Yeah, yeah, there are some of them, uh, but one of them I picked it because it's from 2016. Uh, the one I picked uh, from that year is is called Pingu Soccer. Ah. Uh, yes. And that one uses a form of um, fuzzy logic for for the AI that controls the uh, the enemy. Is that fuzzy logic? Sorry. Yeah. Um, could you give us a brief description of what fuzzy logic is, in, or is it, would the... this be a long discussion? <laughs> I, I might try to do a, a small introduction. <laughs> uh, fuzzy logic is just uh, when you look at normal logic, you see uh, something happens in, in computers themselves. Is something happens or doesn't happen? That's normal logic. It's yes. true or false. When you look at fuzzy logic, you look at a spectrum between between zero and one, between uh, yes and no. And that's more like you you design fuzzy sets, which is called, uh, fuzzy set is an example is, um, if you think of a normal logic and you try to measure your distance to an enemy, you can say, if my distance is greater than five, mm -hmm. then I'm far. If it's lower than five, then I'm near. But, but when you look at fuzzy logic, you put that uh, five not as a, a hard constraint, but a fuzzy constraint. So you think if, if you are near the five, mm -hmm. you, you are uh, getting near as long as you go to, uh, to the five and beyond. And you are getting uh, farther as long as you go more to more uh, far from five to the ten or something similar so yeah. the distance to the five means something and not if you are uh, greater or lower than the five i see yeah. so that yeah. that's that's kind of progressive thinking mm -hmm. and and you use that uh, for all the logic of your game and that makes progressive decisions no they are not uh, the, the kind of decisions you see in, in most of the games that when you pass a point, the enemy stops chasing you. He's uh, fighting uh, against us again. Yeah, yeah. So, let me just... Oops. Reconnected. Right, I think we're reconnected. Uh, refresh dream. And just type that in the chat. Yeah, have a drink. Sorry, Fran. Well, I was telling we were only going to talk for 30 minutes, and we've been... Like nearly an hour. Yes. It's a kind of Virgin Media in the UK. Um, they're known. To, they said we have terrible internet in the UK. I don't know what it's like in Spain, but we have well, like two choices. We, we used to have terrible internet years ago, but I think now is is quite quite nice. It works more or less well most of the time. Cool. Uh, just time to refresh again because we've got the. I've got green lights, so we are good. Um, I've got the preview, and we're yeah, that's moving. That's cool. So we'll carry on. So don't, I don't want it to get too late, and plus people probably want to see some games. Um, um, let me just sorry, uh, I've just screwed something up there. Never mind. Um, right, okay, let's get back to this then. I've just lost my questions. Um, okay. Oh yes. Right. Okay. Um, so we're moving on from AI then, and you, you've given us an example. So we will look at uh, Pingu Soccer. Uh, probably is the first game when we finish the interview. Um, so I assume that you keep in touch with some of these, some of your students who have finished the course. Um, have any of them uh, yet gone into like the game industry? Have you got any good success stories to share with us from like past students? 
Yeah, we we have uh, many of them that are now working in games industry, and in fact, we we are uh, organizing a new event. Uh, we ha we have had a, a meeting today because we we are trying to organize for for uh, 2022 the first edition of what we will call uh, uh, UA Games DevCon which will be kind of a, a conference, a development conference, in which we'll, we will be uh, um, bringing again uh, our students to the university, some of them that are now working in the in, uh, development industry, and they will be um, telling their experience in computer games to the the actual students, the present students. Oh, brilliant, excellent. So we are organizing this event and, and we have students now working on Blizzard, on Ubisoft, on King, on um, Mediatonic, um, and Mercury's team too, and a lot of them. And uh, I lost the loves the track of, of some of them, mm -hmm. but I I keep in contact with with uh, some of them and they they have uh, quite interesting stories to tell. Excellent. Well, that's fantastic. Cool. Well, in in fact, one of the things that that it's quite curious. I I used to tell them and they didn't believe me. But they now is, uh, have started to believe me when they go to uh, to game dev companies and they they um, they show their curricula and in their curricula says I developed an Amstrad CPC game mm -hmm. and uh, in the interviews that's the most interesting part of their curricula most of the time really? they 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 point with the finger and this you did this <laughs> how did you do this that's fantastic that's brilliant fran that's uh, that that must make you very happy and uh, yeah, yeah yeah makes me very happy but i i was telling them in advance because i know most of the the um, people at the game dev industry are now more or less uh, uh, my age or in a similar range yes and um, and they probably have learned in a similar way, most of them, and they have started with uh, a ZX Spectrum or an Amstrad or something similar. Mm -hmm. And if they say, if they see now uh, people developing that way, it's different because they, they will have a pile uh, like this of curriculas of people uh, knowing Unity and Unreal and those technologies. But if you say I'm doing a game in Assembler, you'll be in a pile like this. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's interesting for them. Exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. I can imagine. That's that's. I, I love hearing that. That's fantastic. So um, moving on. Um, I mean, each year we've seen some really stunning games come, uh, not just from students, but of course outside. You know, people have joined in the competition, like the four megahertz team and. Tony Ramirez and all that kind of stuff. I mean, each year it seems to be getting more and more impressive with games as new ways are found to push the Amstrad. There's more tools available that are easier to use and such like. Uh, I mean, like last year, Oscar Z being a great example of that. Um, it's something we just never saw back in the day. Um, how do you feel about that? Uh, sorry, I, I lost part of your question. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, it's just like, it's like year on year, we're seeing more and more impressive games that are really pushing the Amstrad to the limits, like uh, Oscar Z last year being a yeah. great example. Um, you know, we had Oscar Z last year. How does that make you feel? Well, I I, I feel minuscule. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, well, I, I, I had the opportunity to speak to Tulo. Uh, Two yes. weeks ago, I because... discovered your channel. Actually, what I'll just do now is uh, you have your own YouTube channel called Professor Retro Man, don't you? Yeah, that's right. it. I'm going to spam the link to the channel in the chat so people could go and click on and subscribe to it. Um, I did actually see today that you'd had interviewed Tulo, the programmer of Oscar Z, 
And I was, yeah. I, I just wish I could understand Spanish because I would, lo- I would have loved to understood what, understood what you were talking about. But that's my problem. But yes, yes. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Tulo was was uh, telling uh, all the people uh, the kind of secrets of their programming. It was just a chat about the techniques used to program Oscar Seed. Mm, I um, that. Yeah, well, that's because my channel is technological, so that's that's why we we could go deeper in those uh, in those things and stuff. And I know uh, the other programmers like Tony Ramirez, and and I know the programmers from Batman Group also, and and I I'm in contact with most of them, and and speaking to them, and they they use a lot of techniques and. It's, it's quite interesting to know what they do and for me it's amazing to see that uh, games uh, sent to CPC RetroDev has, has achieved such such a high level of, yeah. of tech development. You see year after year from CNG Soft for instance, uh, yes. who is also a friend of mine and yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's really good uh, CNG Soft is technologically really nice um, and this is really incredible for me and I, I've had uh, an, an opportunity to learn year after year from from all of them it's it's I I, I have never uh, thought of uh, this possibility when I started the the contest I, I just was uh, was thinking of being happy if, if people from the community wanting to participate with with normal games but this kind of impressive technological achievements that's that's really out of my original thinking yes 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 okay i'm gonna ask you like uh maybe two more questions here quickly and then if you don't mind if there's any questions from chat we'll answer them quickly if that's okay if you have time yeah yeah okay uh do tell me if you have to go if you have to go please just say no uh, no i i can't stay no problem okay uh just a quick question then uh I assume then that you'll keep doing the CPC retro dev for many years to come. Is that is that the plan, or are you happy to carry on doing this? Yeah, I'm I'm happy to carry on. I'm and in the last years I'm starting to think on how to change a little bit parts of it uh, from the part I mean from from the learning part of my students because <clears throat> I'm I'm having an internal fight with myself uh, because when, when when I started there wasn't uh, there wasn't code or, uh, in the internet for them to to pick and copy and paste and those things so they they actually had to develop everything yes. but now uh, there start it's starting to to be a lot of uh, code base developed uh, and see, right. sometimes it's, it's difficult for me to to maintain their focus on on creating things instead of copying the things. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm thinking of how to change the way to to preserve that focus on creation instead of trying to copy and change or something similar. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that's difficult for me, and I my plan is to continue um, organizing CPC Retro Dev, but I'm thinking of of how to change some rules, some things to preserve the the learning part of gotcha. of CPC Retro Dev. Yeah, don't know. I don't know right now uh, what the future will be. Uh, what new ideas we could put into practice but i'm i'm confident that i will do my best for continuing with cpc retro dev ah, fantastic excellent and uh yeah i will be talking about this before the stream but um can you tell us are there any other amstrad projects that you are involved in we also we already mentioned the cpc teller of course I'm involved in so many projects that I've lost <laughs> the track. <laughs> yeah, I'm, last time I was asked this question, I counted all the projects, not Amstad project, but all the projects I'm, I'm in now, and they were 34. 
Is that 35? So, sorry, your mic just cut out there, sorry. 35 projects in... Wow. And with respect to Amstrad, the, all, all, of, of course, these many projects, but I'm on CPC Telera, of course, with, which is my my main project for so as to say yes um of course the cpc retro dev and um i'm on on two games right now uh one with with retro bytes with with tony ramirez and uh, we started the game and just uh, maybe we, we've been one month with with it and it would take long and I am in another one with uh, with two friends from RetroWorks, uh, and that uh, that is, is is not so because we, the one we started with Tony Ramirez and RetroBytes is more technologically oriented. Okay, it's it's we're trying to to develop quite interesting technologies Ooh. to to do impressive things. Excellent. So that, that that's for long. Um, the other one is not so technological, it's m more kind of a um, gameplay, say, it's something similar to Cybernoid. Oh, right. But, but no, not, not so technological, more, more th uh, thought from the game design part and without uh, high expectations just to make an interesting game and to enjoy it. Excellent, fantastic. Um, right, so what we're going to do then, Fran, uh, if anyone has any questions in the chat for Professor Fran, um, please uh, let me know. I know several of you were chomping at the bit earlier. Um, I think actually Denhog had a question. Uh, please feel free to ask a question now. Um, so um, I don't, I think we won't talk about this. Uh, we, you, you have given me six games that are your favorites or you think that deserves some more spotlight okay is that uh, is that fair to say yeah yeah uh, i have six games picked up yeah fantastic mm. and then these are ones that you just sort of singled out from one from each year of the competition you've singled well for the, for the last six years you've singled one of them out because of something interesting or like you mentioned earlier, Pingu Soccer because of the uh, AI in it and stuff. And uh... yeah, uh, they were singled out because uh, I wanted to pick games that are uh, say uncommon. The the games that not many people think of, and wanted to to just highlight uh, the important stuff that is uh, in those games because I think. There are in CPC Retro Dev, apart from from the winners and and the ones that take all the attention, there are many interesting ideas that sometimes are uh, in the middle of the um, of all the games and in in some sense they they get lost, mm -hmm. but but they they could be quite interesting to review to rethink of yes. and I've just seen one on the list there the. The one that's got portals. I, I won't mention the yeah. name. I've been trying yeah. to remember that one. That one, I think that was in the first year I was a judge in the CPC Retro Dev. And that Tun one. Tunnel effect. That, yeah, yes, tunnel effect. That just blew my mind. There's portal. It's portal. <laughs> yeah, so, it's, yeah, it's. I've been trying to remember that one. Portal. Yeah, fantastic. So I can't wait to try that one out and uh, show the people in the chat that one if they've missed out on it. Okay, we've got some questions coming in. Um, Novabug, who's obviously on the jury as well, has a question. Uh, Fran, he asks, would it be possible to have a simple program which converted Amstrad disk files to CDT format? In other words, it can write the loaders and order the files automatically from a source disk file. Wow. Um... I know that there are programs that do that, but I think it's impossible to make it simple. That's because not every game on disc and uh, could be easily converted to to cassette. Uh, there are differences from disc to cassette, and and that those differences are not easily overcome 
unless uh, you're talking about uh, simple binaries or sequential loads or something similar that well many games uh, could be easily converted this way but i think most of the games in 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 disk uh, try to uh, to get advantage advantage from being in disk um those games would be if not too difficult some of them could be not impossible but really really difficult to convert to cassette yeah because you need to change uh, the way they work not 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 just it's not just a um a format uh, no, it's not a format problem if you have code inside the games that is thought to to work with a disc uh, you cannot change that easily. You you would need to change the the code of the games. Yeah. Okay, great answer there. Uh, GP is asking the question in Spanish. Oh, he's translated it. I think we've actually already answered this earlier in a way. Here, GP is asking: Is it easy or difficult to program the Amstrad? And I think what he means is probably in relation to other computers like the Commodore sixty four or ZX Spectrum. I think I kind of asked a similar question earlier, didn't I? Yeah, well, I I usually see well, I usually say that uh, difficult is a word we use uh, when we don't know anything. When when you learn something, mm -hmm. it it uh, change it change the thing from difficult to not so difficult. Normally, it's a it, difficulty in in these computers is just part of the learning uh, of the learning stuff. Yeah. When when you learn, uh, it stops being difficult. It it could continue being uh, something that requires time and work, mm -hmm. but uh, but it stops being difficult. Sure. I think, of course, as well, it de it depends on what. Uh, tools are, are available out there like we talked about there's, there's lots of code libraries the cpc teller there's lots of debugging tools some perhaps are made better on certain systems than others i don't know if it would uh if the commodore 64 has similar libraries i would assume it does made by made in a different way i assume they have good debuggers and stuff like that but um you know, well, I'm 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 not an expert on on machines like the Commodore 64, but I I would expect that uh, that in Commodore 64 there should be uh, many more tools than in the Amstrad, uh, just because the the Commodore 64 has a much greater community. I would assume so, yeah. I'll have to yeah. ask uh, one of my friends who's a Commodore 64 streamer. And uh, Anyway, um, so a few people have been asking this. I don't think Fran is involved with this project, uh, but uh, he does know the team behind it. Several people are asking, like FC Denhog, um, Vespertino. Have you heard of Vespertino, <laughs> Fran? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> he says wearily. Um, and they're asking, is it possible on the, on the Amstrad CPC? And does he think it will ever be released? <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure it will be released. It's not, I'm, I'm not. I, I, I'm. I don't think it won't be released. It may take time, but it, I'm sure it will. It will be released. Yeah, yeah. I think I. I did actually. I've, I've told. I've told everyone this before. I spoke to Rhino from the Batman Group in December yeah. last year. I said, "Are you still working on this?" And he was like, "Yes, very much so." But he kept it short. So. Do you have any updates from Rhino at all, or is that something you can can or can't share? No, I I I, I have been a long time without speaking to Alejandro, uh, with Rino in this case. Um, oh, we can hear I, your cat. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's demanding my attention oh. now. <laughs> it's here. Uh, you know, this is this is attention demanding. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, we, uh, I get disturbed by my cats on the stream all the time as well. Sorry, yes, he was uh, uh, Rhino. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, Rhino, Rhino uh, it's uh, it's a great programmer, not just because he knows a lot of technical stuff, but but oh. Uh, okay. Oh, and we should be back. I'm just need to tell the chat to refresh. There's something bad with my camera. 
think if you hold your hand up a little bit in front of your face, it might focus I, on you. I, I've tried it, but it's it's unfocused and doesn't want to focus again. Oh, I nearly did then. Mm. It, the cat, the, oh, we want to see your cat. We can. See, this might be the cat in the background. <laughs> That's confusing. It. Yeah. Um, so, uh, those of you that just refresh are coming back. Um, don't I, worry. I may try to to uh, stop the camera and put it again. Yeah, you could try that. Yeah, yeah. So don't Let's worry, try. don't worry. That's nothing to do with the stream having lag. There we go. Oh, and we can see your cat. Oh, you put your fabulous, yeah. fabulous cat there. Wow. <laughs> um, is it a boy or a girl? And what's what's the name? Yeah, uh, it's called Sheila. She Sheila. Sheila. S S H I R A. Oh, Sheila. Sheila. Right, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. What a beautiful cat that is. Oh man. Very very fluffy cat. <laughs> it's it's a, a Siberian cat. It's from 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 the north. <laughs> right. Wow. <laughs> wow, everyone's got everyone is loving the cat in the chat, Fran. Um, it's been the star of the show so far now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's normal. Stop, every, stop. Every, time I, every time I show my, my cat, uh, the attention drops from me. <laughs> <laughs> it's still the show, though. Bless him. Um, okay, sorry, I did have another question. Uh, what's this one here? Uh, it's from Mike ZT. Fran, is there a theory on how to balance game levels difficulty? For example, add two enemy new enemies to the level with two enemies is harder than to level. And sorry, Mike's from Germany, so he's uh, his native language is German and he's translated to English. And yeah, so but yeah, I think I think I think get the gist of the question there. Do you teach? Uh, I think is there a theory on how you implement? A difficulty curve and balance as you progress through a game and levels in fact there is no one theory but many theories and it's quite uh, important for me this part not because i'm a game designer uh, that i'm not but because i'm a teacher and it's the same because balancing difficulty in a game it's actually uh, uh, targeting the most important part a game does with uh, with uh, the user is that teaching the user how how to play the game. Yes. So a, a good a good game always has to teach the uh, the players how to play and how uh, has to to design a way for the player to uh, learn and improve their mastery of the game. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly, exactly the same we teachers have to do with our students with the uh, uh, educational content. It's exactly the same. So the theories overlap completely. So, uh, the, the theories I, I study and the research I do to teach my students overlaps completely with uh, game theories for uh, how to design levels and those things. They differ in the practice because the practice is not the same, but the theory is the same. Mm -hmm. And I, I can say that it's, it's a, a complete world of, of many things to learn. Um, most of the time there is no simple answer there's a lot of things to learn to understand and even if you learn the theory you need a lot of practice which is what game designers have yeah uh, a good game designer uh, might not know the theory but uh, he or she probably has a uh, good practice and a good intuition mm -hmm. on yeah. how, how to create a proper learning curve for for the users to to start learning how to play and to go in the path to mastery of of the game yes um, it also overlaps with um, with uh, cinema because you you need to be challenged to develop your abilities further by the game mm -hmm. but you cannot be continuously challenged 
because uh, if so, uh, you would uh, uh, you would be um, like if you were running all the day, uh, y you will lose all your energy. Yes. So yes. the the game uh, needs to challenge you for a while, and when you finish part of a challenge, the game needs to stop and to let you. Uh, yeah. 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 Let, yeah. Let you breathe a little bit mm. and enjoy your new abilities gained, and then go for another challenge. Yeah. Yeah. It's taking you on a ride, and it's gonna maintain your interest right through to the end. You were gonna go with with a cinema analogy, where you like the film. You know, you can't start off with explosions and craziness right from the start and just carry on all the way through the movie. That, that theory is, is called the channel of flow, and yeah. uh, you can look for it. It's it's a, a Russian researcher that's called Mihalin Chelinsky, and it's quite old. It's it's from the forties. Excellent. Um, okay, a couple more questions here. Uh, Anna in the chat there, she has a question. Uh, do you think the Amstrad CPC computer line had the potential to go on into the 16-bit realm if they wanted to? Wow, that's quite a difficult question. <laughs> it's not really your area, but it's just like a general, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah, but I, I think um, going for 16 bits, you could continue being the Amstrad line because it could be an Amstrad product, but I think it would be a different computer. Yeah, it yeah. would not be uh, the Amstrad we know just changing the CPU. It's it's more or less a complete new yeah, design. It'd be a whole new architecture, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so they they could have been, they could have existed, and, and they could have been Amstrad products, but not even if you call that the same line, not this, actually the same line. Right, yeah. And I think probably maybe last question here from the chat then. So Technic has a question. What's the best, most unexpected hack you found for the Amstrad CPC that really helps you overcome an issue? Ooh. Wow, well, that's just yeah. <laughs> question too, because it's not the, the most interesting hack. The most interesting that let me overcome an issue. Wow. Hmm. I <laughs> guess you're gonna think that. about a big problem you had, um, which which really tested you, and then you found a way around it some way. Uh, I guess. Well, I think the uh, one of the most interesting parts uh, of the Amstrad is how how the uh, video memory is organized, and there are uh, the, it's, it's quite flexible what you can do with video memory in the Amstrad mm -hmm. uh, compared with other computers. Yeah, because you you can change almost everything. Um, you you can. Even if you want, you can make the screen disappear and reappear and yeah. change the geometry. And you can see our DC registers, right? Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things uh, which is uh, which is strange to see people doing is changing the number of lines a character is made of. You you know that uh, characters in the Amstrad CPC are made of eight lines. Okay. Uh, that can be changed. You you can make characters of two lines, of seven lines, of five lines, if you okay. like. Okay. And do you, do you this... mean like do you mean like a sprite? Sorry, when you say um, character. Is is I mean character are the the letters, the, the letters and yeah everything. Oh is, yeah, sorry, right, a, okay, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A character. Sorry, yes. So you can um, that's that's hard coded in more or less in, in how the um, the structure of the video memory works because the structure of the video memory uh, is uh, is thought to be uh, uh, like a stream of characters. Mm -hmm. it, that's uh, you can thought of the video memory of like eight lines of bytes continuous containing. Uh, some drawings, the characters, the the 
fonts or other other um, widgets. Yeah. But you can you can change that hard coded value, and okay. you can make the the video memory uh, work as if your characters hard two lines, three lines, seven lines. Yeah. And this kind of change um when i was developing uh, uh the latest thing i was doing with uh, with a scroll for a game engine mm -hmm. uh, made me change completely my my code by by reworking the number of lines per character and that made me create a, a new way of making scroll wow that's fascinating i find that really fascinating yeah <laughs> that's, that's people great. is thinking of, of new screen modes or those things that many people also ha have done yeah uh, the, the ways of combining things uh, you can combine things in Amstad to create modes that the Amstad doesn't have yeah that's crazy that's, yeah. yeah I think we're going to see more of that hopefully in the future yeah um, that's, that's because of the flexibility the, yeah, the video memory yeah. Has. It's quite flexible, and then you can think of many combinations. Exactly. I mean, I, I was talking to a Commodore 64 coder, whether he was, I don't know how good he is, but he was saying about how, I mean, we all know how well the Commodore 64 can scroll, you know, spr and move sprites about very smoothly at 50 frames per second quite easily, but you are extremely restricted in what you can do in that area. So yeah. on one hand, you've got it there on tap. You've got the hardware scrolling abilities and stuff like that. However, that comes with a cost and a price of like restrictive of how you can do sprites and how many can be on a certain horizontal line before you start getting flicker. Uh, like yeah, that, like that's that's the NES and things like that. Yeah, yeah, that that's exactly the same with all the consoles of the the same era mm. because all of them had uh, more or less the same ideas. Yeah, like the, it's just saying that like the NES had a similar issue. Uh, so for years, like the Amstrad, with our games commercially released, we often had poor... Scrolling was often quite poor at a poor frame rate, but we're discovering all this new flexibility now. Here we are in 2021. You know, it's, uh, it's great to see when we see things like Oscar Z running full screen into borders smoothly. At, it's, it's over 25 or 50 frames per second. Kimball Dreams from the Batman group. Uh, just mind-blowing what they did there. It's fantastic to see. I think we've got a great future in the Amstrad community ahead of us, I think, Gran. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Um, that's because we are developing uh, directly targeting the Amstrad, not like uh, Oh, sorry, one second. That... I think we've just had another <laughs> lag. Oh, I was just wrapping things up there a bit. There. I think that was a nice question. Um, La is lag is... Lag is pursuing us. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are back. I'm just going to say to chat, refresh. Uh, if you have lag, refresh. Okay. So, so for those who, yeah, I think we're back now. So just to, just to, where, where we were there, we were just sort of saying how amazing it is in 2021. These new techniques are being found thanks to the flexibility of the uh, how the uh, video and screen is can be man manipulated. And we've had Pimple Dreams and Oscar Z. I think we've got a very few, a healthy future ahead in the Amstrad community. Yeah, but that that's I I think it's because we are developing directly for the Amstrad, which was not so common uh, previously. Uh, because yes. in, the, in the commercial era, uh, we had uh, so so uh, slow scrolls because the easier way to port things from one, one computer to the other was not to use hardware uh, of the computers but to do a software renderer that works more or less the same in all the computers. yeah exactly okay um <laughs> fc denhog i will i will i will change the question there slightly this is the last question that i'll ask you from, its, from the Amstrad's commercial days up to like 1993, 4 or whatever, what is your favourite ever Amstrad game? <laughs> <laughs> That's the last question. Well, I, I have many favourite Amstrad games and every time someone asks me this question, I think I changed the game. <laughs> <laughs> 
You can say top three if you want, if that's easier. Yeah, I, I, when I was a child, I, I loved um, uh, the games uh, of uh, sport games, um, uh, soccer games, and I, I loved Match Day too, yes. and Football Manager and those things. Yeah. And I also enjoyed a lot with AMC, for instance. Ah, the, the Astro Marine Corps. Really, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Really nice game. And 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 I know to nowadays and I I have a great relationship with the with the coder of the game, which really? is one of our wow. Yeah, he's one of one of our judges. Oh, it fantastic! Is, yes. Yeah, right. that's Pablo. Yeah, it is one of our judges nowadays. I I also enjoyed um, Fantis, which I think is was it was called Game Over Two there maybe. Yes, I think, I think so. I think so. Yeah, I'll just double check that. But yeah, um, it was uh, an easier game, uh, not not so difficult. But but I loved it because of the theme and how it worked. And I also know the programmer nowadays, which is Carlos Abril. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yes, it was game over two in the UK. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, and cool. I, there's many of many games, and, and also Target Renegade. Uh, I I love Target oh, Renegade love too. too. Fran, we are so similar. I loved my favourite games are football games on the Amstrad. Growing up, Target <laughs> Renegade was fav my favourite. We were both eight years old when we got our Amstrads. I think, I think I was eight yeah. or seven. Um, we were still using it to the age of sixteen. Well, and we're, we're like... still living it today. Yes, exactly. Fran, it has been an absolute delight, honour, privilege to speak to you this evening. Thank you so much for giving up some of your very precious time on a Friday evening for us. Uh, I think everyone is saying they've really enjoyed themselves. So I see some really nice comments been coming in. We've had over 70 people watching for the vast majority of the stream. So currently... And uh, obviously hundreds more are going to watch this tomorrow and so forth. So, so thank you very, very much, Fran. Um, I really look forward it's, to it's, you. It's really been my, my pleasure. And, and of course, I'll, I'll be here anytime you want and, uh, and it's possible for me. So if you want to chat uh, any, any time in the future, yeah, just, just call me because it's my pleasure. Fantastic. We'll do, we shall definitely do a 10 year special when we, when we hit the 10 year anniversary. We'll yeah. have a very special yeah, party should. for that or something. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if, if before that, yeah, thank you, Fran. That's very, very kind offer of you. Um, yeah, everyone's giving, uh, oh, everyone's putting some really lovely comments in the chat there. So uh, that's fantastic. So thank you very, very much again, Fran. What we're going to do now, boys and girls, is Fran has given me. Uh, six games from the CPC Retro Dev. He has chosen one game uh, from each year, going six years back, so starting from 2015. And he has told me his reasons why. And so what we'll do, um, we'll, we will go through them after, after a short break. And uh, we'll go through Fran's choices of games that he thinks deserve some spotlight again or there was something impressive about it that may have been overlooked so we're going to do that next after a, a short break so i'm going to say thank you again to fran i don't know if he's going to be in the chats as well i don't know but uh thank you again fran i really appreciate that my friends and uh, i look forward to speaking to you again uh in the retro dev fight finals next friday thank you very much all of you and i hope uh, everything uh, in the final works uh, great and we can enjoy it in, like all the previous years yes fantastic thank you very much again fran take care and i'll see i'll, I'll be seeing you and speaking to you next week next friday see you all see ya bye <laughs> thank you there we go uh, ladies and gentlemen boys and girls Thank you, uh, thank you to Fran there. I hope you all enjoyed that uh, interview. Um, Alright, uh, so I was getting some messages here. Um, I'm going to take a short little break. Uh, Mrs. iPhone needs uh, some assistance from me anyway. I think with mini Zypho, it's only fair I go up and have a look. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so guys, there's some lovely, some lovely comments there coming in. Thank you. Um, let me just put the music up a touch. I brought it down a bit. 
Uh, this is a great interview. Thanks for both of you. Thank you, Chris Lord. Welcome to the stream as well, my friend. Thank you. Um, I know I missed out a lot of the chat. That obviously I had to talk to Fran, so I missed out chatting to you guys. Uh, so if you've got any uh, comments, uh, feedback, and uh, things you want to say, obviously put that in the chat now. Um, two humps the price. What? <laughs> Thank you, GP. Um, yeah, I thought that. I thought that was a really. I, I found that an absolutely fascinating interview. Um, uh, I'm not saying that I'm the best interviewer in the world, it's just, you know, but like, I, I loved hearing Fran talk about, um, it wasn't, I loved hearing about the really geeky technical stuff, I love hearing things about AI and coding techniques and how you teach uh, certain subjects and stuff, I find that fascinating, but also it was really fun getting some of his insights on other things there as well. It was a nice balance of stuff, and he was a great person, a very easy person to talk to. So, um, also, I think Novabug has done a whole podcast uh, called the he calls it the Amscast on his YouTube channel with uh, Fran. So, obviously, just go on YouTube, put in Amscast Novabug Francisco Galigo, and I'm sure you'll find that video. That might be something you, you would like to watch and listen to tomorrow with your hangovers or whatever. Um, and thank you everyone for tuning in, sticking with us there. It was obviously a really popular guy. We've been sat around 65 to 75 con con concurrent viewers since the interview started. And um, and I'm very sorry for the lag. Unfortunately, I don't know if it's YouTube's end or uh, my end tonight. But only a couple of brief outages during the stream. So thank you guys. Oh, Nova Book. I can, uh, I can... Such passion he has with the CPC. Long live Retroviv. Okay, actually, I'll just replay a couple of alerts. I do know the bugs there again. Oh, why is the sound not working? That should be okay now. Let me just try that again. There we go. Oh, Nova Bug. The 464 there. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very, very, very much. There have a few dancing Lord Sugars as a thank you. Top work, Al. Always love listening to Fran. Such passion he has with the CPC. Long live Retrodiv. That's... That, oh! Sorry. Oh, it's just replaying again. Ah! i just turn this off. I'll just turn the uh, sound off there a second there. Thank you, uh, thank you, Novabug. That's very, very, very kind of you. That's one thing I do love about. Uh, uh, what? That's Top one thing. Work, I'll always love listening to Fran. Such passion. <sighs> Sorry. Live retro, did. Oh! I know you're on repeat there, but oh my goodness! What a Lewis Waddo! <laughs> Lewis Waddo, thank. Oh my goodness! Thank you for the ten. Pounds there. CPC for Eva. <laughs> love it when the CPC retro dev comes round each year. So much love for our beloved 8-bit machine. Thank you. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's a banana frenzy. Mr. Shovel. Great interview. I really enjoyed hearing Fran talk about the technical stuff with such passion and enthusiasm. I'm looking forward to seeing this year's submissions. Awesome stuff. Man Shovel, thank you very, 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 very much there. Thank you, Man Shovel. And I, I totally agree with both uh, yourself uh, uh, and Novabug there. What I loved about Fran there was his passion. You could see it in his face. There was a smile on his face when he was talking about Amstrad's coding, AI, his students, the CPC Retro Dev, and you know, that's not fake. That That's real, and he can tell it, and you can tell it from his answers and stuff. But I love his, um, I love his uh, uh, positivity and passion there as well. Lewis Waddo, CPC Forever, dude. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. And yeah, I can't wait for the CPC Retro Dev 2021 next Friday. Um, also, I've got some to replay from earlier. Sorry. We had Michael Taggart, aka Funny Man. Funny Man, thank you for the 
five pounds. This is why this, these are ones that popped in during the interview. Thank you, just wanted to give them a, a thank you again and some love. We also had um, Jockstrad, if that's going to replay. There it is. Jogstrad with the 464 there, who had, had a message. Love seeing these retro dev games over the years. Me too, my friend. We're going to revisit a lot of them very, very, very shortly. We'll get to some games in like a few minutes, guys, as soon as we can. And also, so thank you, Jockstrad, Chris McGilvray, and also Lord Respirku, the $5 through the super chat. Says, Hello, Lord Zypho. Professor Fran is doing a lot for the Amsterdam CPC community. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Um, what I, thank you, Lord Respigo. What, what I will say about Fran is... Oh! <laughs> Commodore 64 Home Brewers. Hang on, who's this? That's GP, 100%. Boo. We hate you, boo. We're so boring and brown. <laughs> From the Commodore 64 Home Brewers fan club there, one pound. Thank, that's GP, that's naughty, naughty GP there. <laughs> Thank you, GP. Bananas for GP in the chat there. What was I was just saying about Fran. Fran is a very humble and modest guy. I don't think he realizes and understands the impact he has had on the Amsterdam community yeah he, he the, 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 a lot of it has been collaborative and a lot he says that other people had a similar idea but fran is the one that stood up and did it and made the cpc retro dev he made it happen and it's my it's my opinion that i think since like the 2016 retro dev this started by the way cpc retro dev started in 2013 but from the 2016 one onwards, um, I've seen it. I think I've seen its impact, and I think it has encouraged a lot more people to start thinking about coding games for the Amstrad and actually making them. And I think without it, we wouldn't have seen. Certainly, wouldn't have seen games like Oscar Z and stuff. So, oh, give some consultants. <laughs> With a one pound tone over there. Who's this? Is this man shovel? Nobody's seen a lovelier shade of brown than the first level in Eliminator. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Ruprim! Ruprim with the four pound twenty eight. Sorry, I, I'm going to assume that last one was uh, man shovel. I might be wrong. I think it was Mad Shovel. Rob Rim, thank you. Thank you much for that awesome oh, interview. Sorry. Appreciated it. Thank you, Rob Prim. Thank you, my friend. Um, it was only an awesome interview because the interviewee, the subject, aka okay, Fran, was so receptive and happy to answer questions in such a lovely and enthusiastic way. And I'm probably embarrassing him, uh, embarrassing him saying... Um, that um, he is definitely very responsible for a lot of the Amstrad games and products we've seen in recent years. It, if it wasn't for him, I don't think we would have seen as much. That's just my opinion. One person's opinion. I don't know if anyone else shares that or not, but um, he's a very, very kind uh, and lovely and modest man is our friend. He is like the king of the Amstrad right now at this time of year. Actually, I'm gonna call him Franz, Franzstrad. Does that work? Franstrad, <laughs> Amstrad, Franstrad, no, not quite, maybe not quite, okay, right, boys and girls, I just, oh, <laughs> that last one was definitely man shovel, is this a man shovel again, my emails are slow coming through, P.S. Turtuzzo, that's man shovel, that's definitely Man Shovel. Thank you, Man Shovel. One last time, we have some bananas in the chat. That was my, I see my emails now. Thank you, Man Shovel. Thank you. Um, 
I think in, in the midst of all that craziness, uh, thank you again, Lewis, for that £10 as well, mate. You're an absolute legend, Lewis. Thank you, mate. Um, I might have missed some uh, messages from uh, people and Fran. Uh, let's see. Just scrolling through quickly if anyone tagged me in anything there. Uh, sorry if I sorry if I've missed anyone's messages there and chat. Obviously the chat has been very very busy. Um, Raf Rafo uh, Lo Lomiu says love from Spain CPC fans. Hola, buenas noches, uh, Rafo. Thank you very very much for joining the stream. I hope you had a nice time here as well. Um, Fran just pop in the chat again. Remember he is Professor Retro Man. Um, let's see. Uh, Ravi, good night, Ravi. That was earlier in the chat there. Take care. Good night, my friend. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, yeah, Professor Reshaman has said earlier, thank you very much to all of you. So thank you. No, thank you, Fran. Thank you very, very, very much. Right. Um, hey, GP. Thank Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, we're all people are taking the mick out of the Commodore 64 now. <laughs> the Beige Boys has donated one pound. Brown, 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 <laughs> lovely brown, wonderful brown. <laughs> Hang on, I think that was I think that was Craig's bar. Thank you. I'm, I'm gonna I think that was Craig's bar. That was. That was Craig's bar. That made me laugh. GP. Good night, uh, GP. Good night, GP. Thank you for the cheeky donos and being a cheeky chappy. We love you, GP. Thank you, Craig's bar. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm just gonna take a short break. Uh, I was meant to come on give Mrs. Ipo uh, a hand upstairs. Vinny's Ipo. I might be too late now. Um, so uh, after the after the break, we're going to play some CPC Retro Dev games. I'll take some of your suggestions in the chat, but we'll start with Fran's suggestions. He's given me six games to look at. We're going to look at the Portal one. That's oh oh oh! I can't wait to try that one. And of course, Pingu Soccer and others. And I'll be back with you guys in about like two minutes. Okay, guys, I'll be right back. I just need to give my eyes a break and just check on Mrs. iPhone, Mini's iPhone. All right, guys, be right back, and uh, thank you guys as well for being so supportive. All right, be right back.
All right, guys and girls. Thank you, everyone, for sticking with us. Who did? Sorry, I had to all sort out my cats as well. One of the cats was crying to go outside. I think the fireworks have stopped now, so I've let him out. And he's the scaredy cat of the two. So um, I hope he's going to be okay. But uh, yeah, and I had to check on Mrs. Zypher and just tuck in Minnie Zypher as well. Bless. So thank you everyone for sticking with us. Oh, good night, Pete. Take care. What's all the doggos in the chat for? Why is everyone spamming doggo? Oh, there was a dono. Doggo has donated one pound. <laughs> Exclamation mark doggo in the chat. Who was that? <laughs> That was Lewis Wado, I think. Thank Quick you. Cypher is gone. Everyone post. Doggo in the chat. <laughs> Thank you, Lewis. Thank you. There you go. The dog's there. <laughs> Thank you, Lewis. Thank you very, very much, mate. All right. Okay. So we're going to play uh, some of Fran's uh, suggestions now. Um... The one he, uh, yeah, oh, the portal game. Well, actually, we'll do um, Pingu Soccer first. Oh, oh dear. Win Apes crashed on me. <laughs> okay, never mind. We're back, we're back. Right, let me uh, just find the disc here. I did have it ready, but because it's crashed, uh, I've lost them. Never mind. Level games. And it's Pingu Soccer, right. Remember, this is quite a simple little one. But the reason why um, Fran has chosen Pingu Soccer, this is from 2016. Uh, Fran, Fran tells me that, although it's another sports game, this time like air hockey. Oh, air hockey is one we'll look at in a bit. But this, this is with Penguins on Ice. The most interesting part of the game is the quality of the opponent's AI. It is really enjoyable and challenging, and the game keeps you focused until you're able to win uh, the AI. With more work on championships, leagues, and other goodies, and some more polishing, uh, it could have been another great hit for the Amstrad. Mm. So there you go. This one is all about the AI then. Um, let's see if we can just start. So I'm the one in blue on the left, going shooting the goal to the right there. Oh, I scored! Oh, I see. Look at the opponent. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's going for the ball and try and defending the goal there. Did you see that? Now that is AI happening right there, boys and girls. They've also scored against us. Oh no! No, no, no! no. Oh! <laughs> Look at that as well. AI in sports games against a, 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 a computer opponent is incredibly difficult to do. I mean, wow. I mean, how many crap football games have there been on the Amstrad? Like, hundreds. <gasps> it's 4-1 ahead. And I'm normally good at this kind of stuff. Oh. No! I just scored an own goal! This is cool! Bloody hell! I'm getting absolutely thrashed by the computer! No! Okay. If you start, I think I start to get the hang of it. <gasps> Oh no! Oh, this might be an own goal. We've got a goal back. This is cool. We've got music in game as well. Uh, the sprites don't really look like penguins, but look at, that. look at this. I'm fighting back. You lost, but the time has ran out. That's cool. Pingu wrecked there. <laughs> this looks fun. It is. I genuinely had fun there. Okay, it, last, it didn't last that long. But yeah, that was cool. Oh, is Jimmy off? Um, hey, take care, Jimmy. Thank you for tuning in, mate. All the best to you and Janie. 
Um, another top stream, mate. Nice to the interview, Fran. See you soon. You're a top man. No, you the top man, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy, uh, I met Jimmy in the flesh, for real, at Play Blackpool. And he's, he's as lovely as he is in the chat. So, that, that's nice. It's nice when uh, you meet people and they're like what you think they are from how they talk in the chat, if you know what I mean. And Jimmy's exactly that. He's a lovely bloke. Lovely bloke. Hey, Super Jim Tendo. Welcome, my friend. An early appearance for you. You're normally a 1am'er dropping in on the stream for the last hour. Nice to have you here early, Jim. Yeah, exactly, Mike ZT. Zyphal is losing there. He still thinks the game is cool. That's the sign of a fun game. That's a good test there. It is a bit like air hockey, FC Den Haag, essentially, yeah. It should be like Pingu air hockey, not Pingu soccer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but a good game is a good game. Uh, even if it's simple and maybe only like a short play time, really, before you move on to a different game. But, um, but this is cool. I'll give it one more blast. And I can see why Fran singled it out for the AI. Oh, look at that. He defended the goal. Saved it. There you go. Who remembers the crap am soccer game? Oh, goal there. That, that played actually very similar to this. But, like, the, the computer next to no artificial intelligence. Look at that. He's back on level terms. The swine. Oh, he actually scored an own goal there. Well, we're two goals up this time. So we're learning and getting better. And that's cool. Because then the game, as Fran was saying, the game has to be rewarding. You have to feel rewarding after you improve and learn skills. It can't be frustrating and unplayable. Uh, the, the, uh, the user has to feel that they are uh, improving with the game and enjoying it as they go along. And there's a nice difficulty curve. I presume uh, there are later levels the AI increases, which is probably be another reason why Fran chose it. Look at him defending the goal. That is clever. Look at that. Look at that. And this has been programmed by students at the university. So that that is freaking amazing. <gasps> what a goal with six seconds left. Five, three. We just got to defend here. Oh, we get a nice little jingle there. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, the code is available for these CPC Retro Dev games, isn't it? So if somebody wanted to study it, they could. That is true. That is true. Um, let me see. So I'm going to go on the CPC Retro Dev website. Here's the English language version of it. Anna, I did get to say hello to you properly, Anna. Because you came in during the interview. Hey, Anna, how are you doing? Um, there's a link to the website for the CPC Retro Dev. But if we just pop over in our browser. Uh... Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, if you go here, I think this was, hang on, what year was Pingu Soccer? 2016 Pingu Soccer. Let's have a look. And then you click check the results here. Pingu Soccer only came eighth in the end. Uh, oh, if you click in this box, uh, you can't see this, but I've got a pop-up window here with a save uh, option. It's a zip file. Let me just uh, open it up. Uh, let me just show you display capture then. I'll say. Why is my display capture keep changing? Hang on. One second, guys. Sorry about this. Just, I just need to resize here quickly. Okay. So, uh, this is a zip file. So I click, I clicked on here. Where is it? There. I clicked on here. We had a, a save file pop up with a, a zip. Where is it? There you go. 
uh, Authors to Project, and you can see Assets Configure Need to Set Source. Default for Code, Maps, Entity. Okay. So these are C files. I, I don't know what you'd be able to uh, open them in Main Haze, but it, lo it looks, yes, I mean, it looks like you can. There's all the files for the game there, the source code. So. I think if this would be in CPC Terra, you'd have to open it in. But yes, May Maze, you can. So if anybody wanted to do any learning there, there you go. Right, so that was CP, uh, that was, uh, sorry, Pingu Soccer. Um, and uh, we're going to have a look at one I was impressed with. I was seriously impressed with this one. This one is called Tunnel Effect. And I believe it's the one with the portals I was talking about earlier. And I love this. I, I really ranked this really high when I was judging that year. Let me just see. Is there any music? Yet? I don't think there's any music. I'll put my volume down on that anyway. Um, see me. Actually, I saw your message earlier about turning my mic up. I've turned my mic up. I did at the time a little bit. Anyway. Um... Yeah, I, I, yeah, Anna. That, that, no, it was a good question, and uh, I saw your meaning. Yes, 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 yeah. Um, sure, there was a game where you killed folks with a shovel. There was. Might have to have a look at that later, Anna. Remind me later. So instructions. Let me just check. You've got a gravity gun. Attract a cube to your position. Tunnel gun. Hang on. Choose a bullet that places a tunnel in the walls. You can pass from another tunnel to the other. A gravity gun and a tunnel gun. Right, okay. Move about with WASD. That's the, that's the keys you need these days. <laughs> Not QAOP or cursors. WASD. W -A -S -D. You can tell these students are with the times. Attract cube. Uh, G. Um... Blimey, there's actually a few controls here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save a screenshot of that so I can refer to it. Um, what's this called again? Uh, this is tunnel effect, isn't it? Tunnel effect controls. Just save the screenshot. Uh, and I'll open it up ready just in case I need it. So move around to do ASAD. Attract cube is G. Um, tunnel gun is IJKL. Oh, that must be IJKL. Oh, yeah, your fingers will be like that on uh, IJKL. That must be shoot up, shoot down, shoot left, shoot right. Okay. Set blue tunnel, set orange tunnel. But blue will be entrance and orange will be exit. In the tunnel, I suspect. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, and just look at the credits there. Design implementation and testing. And then, uh, there's the there's the address uh, website address if you want to check out the coder. Where yeah okay right let's have a look then. No one. Oh um what am I doing here? I remember I uh, my name was Selena. I think with this gun I can create tunnels. I hope I can uh, escape with it. Okay, so move is that. G is a tracked cube. Oh, it's a switch to open the door. Okay. Oh, to pick up a block and drop it there. It's a puzzle solver as well. Um, set blue tunnel. Uh, tunnel gun. Oh. Blue tunnel set orange tunnel. Um, how does this work then? So I, just, I want to make a tunnel there and I want to make an exit to orange tunnel. Was P. Set so orange tunnel was P. Oh! Ah! There you go. 
Sarah got it. That's cool. See, that's clever. Level two, that ball and floor seem dangerous. Ah, okay, so. Right, we need to escape out of here. So we need to go there. Oh, there's, look, in the top corner there, very top corner, can you see there's like a little orange cube, very top right. Oh, if I pause, I could get my cursor out. See that, watch that. See how it changes colour? O and P to change the colour. We've got an orange, we're going to shoot that up, like that. I'm going to pick this up, watch. Isn't that clever? That's awesome. That's awesome. So we've got an orange. We want to put that orange there now. And go. Ah. Right, okay. So we're kind of stuck now. That's okay. We can get out of this. Like that. Ah. Okay, uh, so we've got one cube. What do we do here? It is portal, just a simple version. Isn't this clever, boys and girls? Ah, huh. the question is though, how do we get this cube? I know, I know, I'm an idiot. Right, okay, watch this. So we want blue, we want to shoot left. What we do is drop it there. Ah! We put it there to be dropped and then go over the switch and then it drops through and then open that switch then opens up the gate top left to the exit. This, this, this is awesome. This is freaking awesome. Um, right, so we need to set the orange exit and we're going to go over there. And we can go. <laughs> ah, that is amazing. I freaking, I freaking love this. I think I, I, I'm sure I gave this like high marks, really high marks. We set a portal there. We're gonna have to be. Oh, actually, how do we get there without dying? Let's think about this. this game requires you to think. We've got to. How do we get? We're going to get up there and shoot an orange one to the top. Where if we can avoid the thing. Like that. That's tough. But we did it. Bit of thinking, a bit of thinking, a bit of timing, a little bit of skill. There you go. Part shovel, part guitar, part spear. What's that name, Hayes? Uh, oh, that shovel knight thing. Yeah, ah, okay. Does the control scheme work well on an original CPC? I remember reading that for new games, some new games or other platforms had issues with real hardware with this combination of keys you can press. I find it's often the other way round of the Amstrad main Hayes. That combinations of key presses don't work very well in emulation. That works perfectly fine on the Amstrad. You remember, there were many uh, games of cheats where you had to hold down a um, set number of keys. Like, right, what was it? Um, Batman the movie was ED209 you had to hold down. And I think any more than three or four keys, and most Amstrad emulators cry just to how... Uh, don't, and it doesn't work because of how... Windows deals with key presses and or something like that. So I think it I, I found it's the way around. Um holding down I don't know, maybe some uh, maybe Novabook knows something about multiple key presses on the Amstrad. <laughs> and maybe it's how you do them, a code them. I don't know. But I found it's the way around, the main haze. There you go. Ken, thank you for the help there as well. Boom GG. There you go. Um, right, level three. That code Selena told me. Can I remember? What What are these things? Oops. What 
What are those blue things? So if we go boom. Uh Yeah. Six and eight is written in the background there. So you might have to remember the numbers six and eight. Level three, six and eight. Maybe a code we need to use later on in the game. Uh, I'm not quite sure. We've got a block to pick. There's a block we can pick up here. But block and blue things. Let's try it. Alright, let's change the orange a second. Uh oh. Yeah. So, by the way, you can't shoot into this wall here, that blue line there, that you won't allow you to. But what we can do, shoot and exit over to the right. I don't know what that blue block thing does at the top there. Must be an, a, an exit button? I don't know. Right, anyway, okay, so we need to time this. Whoa! <laughs> I, got, I got wrecked there. Ass. Okay. So we're going to drop down from the top. There. Actually, no, we don't, do we? Because we're going to come flying out of there. Uh, we need to get to the top. Try conducting uh, the red energy ball to the holes. Oh, Professor Retro Man. Fran is still in the chat here. Fantastic. Fran, I'm loving this. Try and conduct the energy ball to the holes. Oh. Right, okay. gonna set that <laughs> ass hang on it just keep I think you could do this multiple times okay hold that up uh, we're gonna do We want to set a portal over here then. That's about right. Okay, we'll just go to orange. No! I fell through! You can move the red ball using the holes. Right, okay. Well, you can see what I was trying to do. I was trying to make a portal so it would, the, ball, the, the red energy ball would go through and then come out the where the number eight is and go left across. So, um... Hmm... Maybe I'm not on the right tracks, but I apologize. But we'll see how we do. Yeah, okay, we're gonna... Arse. Okay. Uh, change the blue. Okay, good, we're through. Okay, so we're gonna shoot a hole there. Right, okay, so done that one. Let's change that to red. But we've lost the energy ball now. Okay. Right. Sugar! Ah! 
Bogger. I was trying to get the orange one as far as close to the edge of that number eight platform as I could there. But unfortunately, I got wrecked. Sorry, oops. Trolls are quite sensitive, I have to say. Uh, often, uh, that, having responsive controls is brilliant. It can make the game very tough, though, in places. Oh, for orange. Ah! Okay, but I, 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 I am really enjoying figuring this out. I'm absolutely loving it. Okay, that's good. Um, now put block to release on red block or to hit the other block. Maybe I think in, we think we I think we take the block over to the right there, top right. Yeah, that's that's what my feeling is on that. That might do it. I don't know. Actually, maybe we can get that a little bit closer. Yep, see that? Okay, that's what I was going for. Change to blue. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Maybe we're going to take this block over to here. Okay. Uh, blue. Right. So, I think maybe we've got to get the energy ball over to the top right one instead. So, okay. Hmm. We won't spend too much longer in this game, guys, if, you th if you're feeling bored by this one. But I, I think this is an interesting game. Very cleverly made game. We want, we want to get this. How do we, how do we deflect that? Oh, I see. I know. How do we get both myself up to the top right? I think I know. I think I see it. We'll do a similar thing. Uh, change to blue. Okay. Right, change to orange. It's opened it. Ah, oh, look at that, boys and girls. The gate is open. That's all we needed to do there. So if we just shoot down here. Look at that. When you actually get, when you work it out, you feel a complete champ there. That's awesome. Love it. Try shooting portals diagonally. Oh, you can shoot diagonally? Oh, I just, I just probably did it way, I made it way harder for myself then. There you go. There you go. Let me just test that. Oh, you can. Look. Hang on. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Huh? You can shoot diagonally. But when you've got a blue wall there, that is a... Um... Yeah, that means you can't put a portal there. That's awesome. I love this. All right, we'll do one more level here. And then we'll move. Actually, probably should move on. We're going to run out of time tonight. Let's see. We've got two squares. We don't know which one will open the gate. That one of them is above the letter number four. One, the other one is above the letter one. So uh, there's something about a code. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, let's experiment. So that opens that. Okay. We don't know which one will open that. Right, okay, so what we need to do then is. Uh, we. 
Oh, we need to get up. How do we get that? We need to get that blue block. And drop it on here. Um... Just that mad commodore says there any uh, says there any news on the best team for Batman group. I think Fran has dropped enough hints that it's like still in progress. So um, yeah, it's coming. How do we get that blo block then, guys? Can you see that? Uh, it's the light blue block with that fruit. With the, uh, the mm. that one. How do we get to that one? Or will we? Because, like, anywhere we shoot on the blue walls is not going to make a portal. We need it on there to open that to get the fireball out. Hmm. Or is it, e is it even needed? Hmm. Any suggestions, boys and girls? <laughs> we love the Commodore here, don't you worry, Mad Commodore. Hmm. Difference between the two ledges height. Ah, height difference. Interesting. I don't know if that helps. Hmm. Yeah, well spotted. Well spotted. That drop into a blue and shoot out an orange. That's the problem, Bright. Uh, if you look to the right of it, you have a blue wall there, so you can't put a portal there or there. So if that's the case, then you've either got to get a portal shot so it drops through the floor where it is. Uh, don't put shares in my space as my suggestion. Top tips there from Anna. Thank you, Anna. Hmm. Can we can we jump? No, we can't really. Huh. And now we're kind of stuck. So that kind of sucks. No portal on blue wall. That's that's the problem. Let's just, let's just it let, does it allow orange? No, it doesn't allow orange. Scheisse, I'm I'm stuck here, I think then. Um Thinking height difference is useful. I don't know how though. I think I might I might have hit the soft lock myself here. Okay, okay, we got back up here. I still, I don't see how, how. Ooh. Because if you're on a height, you can use a different skate to the lower edge. Uh, are we, are we buffering again? I don't think so. No, it's all, I'm not getting more in my end. Um, hey, Chris Lord, thank you, my friend. Take care, dude. Um, thank, thanks for having us here tonight. Uh, thanks for being here tonight, sorry. My right, products gain momentum in a repeating portal than fire one at the top left wall. That's not a bad suggestion. Okay, let's try this. Will this... This might not be a good thing to do, but... Damn! It doesn't matter where we are. 
Yeah, that's... Hmm... What?! How did I manage to do that?! I, I... I... I actually looked away there for a second, and I made it. What? You may want to think on your movements and urge to go beyond your limits. I don't think I was supposed to be able to do that, but somehow I have. Use higher ledge. Top left wall, one on the floor. Fall in the momentum might fling you across. Possibly. But I, I think I've... I, I glitched it. <laughs> Fran, was I not meant to do that? Okay, uh, that may not be great. Oh, hang on, I'm stuck here. Hey, good night, Novabog. Take care, dude. Not going through. We want to get it. Uh, so we want the blue one. I'm going to jump here. Oh, I've done it! I think I glitched my way through, but that will do. We got to level five. There's numbers here. O one two eight. So uh, I don't I don't know what the number sequence means. It's probably a hint on which one we have to get the uh, the fireball to. But anyway, we'll move on from that one. So that is bloody good. Do do we all agree we like tunnel? Uh, what's this called again? Sorry. Um, Tunnel effect. Are we all agreed that that this is a damn good game? Uh, looking past the simplistic graphics and stuff, it's all about the physics, puzzle solving, and portals. Great stuff. Right, we're going to move on from that. So um, that was tunnel effect, and I love that. Let's go to a really early game to one I never played, um, and it was, it was before my time looking at CPC Retro Dev. Um, Again, uh, those uh, the, uh, the, the those the, those two games and this one coming up here, they're all made, games made by the students, of course, as well. This one is from 2015. This is called Maz to the Past. Um, and Fran has chosen this one because it's a game about controlling two characters placed at different dimensions at the same time. The concept is simple, but gives a lot of room for playing and exploring. And even with simple level design of this version, its results quite challenging and enjoyable. Similar to others, expanding this concept could produce an amazing game for the Amstrad writes Fran. Hmm. Free stars from Richard Jimenez. Hey Richard, how you doing, my friend? That is certainly a five pud game from Craig Harrison. Craig's bar there. Exclamation mark puds for Craig there. Logo looks a bit familiar, doesn't it? Yes, OJBs. Uh Jaguar Patrol. Control lanes. Oh. Movement is up, down, left, right. Control, space, C. Uh... Oh. Oh, excuse me. I'm not quite sure what that means, but we'll just get into it and see what happens. Oh, you control two characters at the same time. Okay. Uh, what are, what are we trying to do here? Oh, one has a gun. Right, okay. Troll switches the gun. C shoots. I don't know what C does. Oh, you have to shoot that thing. Right, okay. Uh, oh, Professor Retroman Fran says... Where are we? Um, uh, and you can destruct the walls. Right, okay. With the gun. Okay, thank you. Let me know there. Oh, hang on. Did I... Did I die there?
Uh, what do we need to do? Oh, do we need to escape? Uh, what's the purpose of the game? So, I shot... Oh, hang on then. Do we shoot this? Oh, we died. Okay. Is this gameplay? Yeah, that's me playing, but I, I don't quite understand what, what the purpose... Oh, man. I'm making sure. We shoot that thing... Shoot the walls. What are we? What are we meant to be doing? Uh, do we have to get one, both of them, to each of the symbols? You see on the flux condenser. Like that. Oh! Press C on both. Oh, okay. Okay, there's a... I don't know what that does. Well, that got us some energy back. Okay, so we need to put the gun here. And we pick up that, and then we go with this one, and pick up this one. Huh? Oh, 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 okay, okay. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, we've got two enemies now. So that is dodging my bullets. Passes the, pass the gun to the other player. So whoever has, whoever has the gun, you can see uh, the symbol appear there. So it's on the left player when it's there. If the gun's on this side, it's the right player. But now uh, we make a way to the radioactive material like this. Oh, I think I shot it. Ass. Okay, I think I, I think I'm getting this now. So we have to get to the radiant material. Press C, and then we come up to the flux capacitor thingy and press C again. Hold it down. That diffuses like the radi radioactive material or something. Oh no, I'm dying here. Right, we've got that. We need to get, we need to be able to get to the radioactive material. So we shoot there. Uh, it doesn't matter actually. We go here, pick it up, and it puts it at the bottom middle there. Do you see that, boys and girls? Oh, I don't know why that happened. But okay, maybe I took too long. And there you go, you move on to level three. Awesome. Okay, that's pretty clever. You saw, uh, right, you need to sort of move the flux condenser into the deposit. It's based on Back to the Future. Oh, okay, hence like the Back to the Future style logo. Right. Uh, Manchester's my experience with the NES games was that they were so expensive. You only got a few per year, so you played the hell out of them until the next birthday or holiday. I can imagine, Manchester, they were like, what, $30, $40 a go? Time. So we still got Fran with us at the moment, and that's it's a nice honour to have Fran still with us tonight. Wait, 21 gigawatts there. There was a nuclear fuel lighter. Pick it up first, and go to the flux capacitor. So I feel like we're inside like the DeLorean or something like that. We're putting the the, the nuclear material inside here, and then using the flux capacitor. Does that make sense, guys? I think so. Just to me now. Out. Uh, 
Ah, got him. Then we go grab it. Oh, it just popped out again. There, there you go. Right. Oh, oh. I got our energy back. That's cool. So grab the nuclear waste, press the C button. We go up to here, the flux capacitor. Aha. Uh, yep. So we pop it back in. Use that. Oh no! We've got another one. Hold the C button on that. Okay. It's cool. So you've got to think about two different characters either side. There you go. That's a clever little game. Okay, so now I've kind of figured it out. It kind of all makes sense. Oh. Get an energy heal there. There you go. And then use that. It pops out, sadly. Okay, then we go and use the material again. Pops it back in. Engage the flux capacitor. Oh! Okay, and then we shoot through the walls to get to the uh, next piece of nuclear waste or nuclear fuel. Go back to the flux capacitor. There we go. Okay. That's cool. I like that, guys. Um, so that was uh, that was Maz to the past. A kind of simple Back to the Future type uh, base, based around Back to the Future type thing. But I, I like how you're having, having to think about two different characters at a time. That's very, very clever. And again... Uh, this was another game made by Fran's students, so very good. Um, the story of the game... Oh, Fran says the story of the game is based on a political joke. Maz was a politician in the game. It gets trapped between two dimensions and needs to escape using the flux capacitor. Right, okay. So that probably doesn't translate over to the UK very well, but yeah, okay, cool. We'll just go with the Back to Teach thing. Charlie Farr! Hey, you found me on YouTube streaming. How you doing, Charlie? Welcome, my friend. So we are looking at some of the games from the CPC Retro Dev competition over the years, um, which is run at the University of Alicante, but anyone can enter. We've had some fantastic Amstrad games, several of which I've recommended to you, Charlie, to stream with, like, with the abduction of Oscar Z is a must. Um, uh, what else did I give you? Uh, Barber's Palace, that was another CPC Retro Dev game. That is amazing. It's like that uh, Billy and Molly on the Commodore 64. Um, so these are like some of the games that didn't quite make like the uh, top of the very very lists But are right interesting nonetheless from like a gameplay standpoint. This is quite an interesting one The one you just missed was like basically portal on the Amstrad the really crap crew graphics But it's portal you shoot a guy you have a little gun shoots a uh, hole in a wall And he shoots the exit and he pull through and really clever stuff actually um, So yeah, these are like old games from the uh, CPC Retro Dev which started in 2013 and uh, we're just based on the recommendations from uh, Fran, who is the lecturer at the university where it's run at. Um, so there you go. Paul Henderson, Fenrir, how you doing, matey? Just something that had an awesome night here. I hope all's gone well tonight. Uh, thank you, man. Were you doing your radio show tonight, were you, Paul? <clears throat> if so, how did it go, my friend? Yeah, we had a really good fun interview. You've come to the dark side, <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> all right, we're going to move on to the next game. Um, excuse me. Right, I'm going to move over into like 2018. <gasps> excuse me. Sorry, guys. Uh, for a game called Fossil F3. Oh, uh, I think it's, I think I remember this one. I think it's like a foosball type game. Uh, and I remember uh, enjoying this quite a lot. Uh, what's happened to my win eight? Oh, there we go. Fossil Foosball F3. There we go. Right. Oh. There we go, it's working now. <clears throat> you want to join the Retro Dev and make a game for Anna, do you, Johnny Boy? Ah, oh, what would that involve? Um, this is a cool game. Um, 
It's the very first game this guy this guy has made by uh, Quique Mikel, if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, <clears throat> and Fran says that this is an amazing game about table soccer. I've never seen a game like this, and I think the concept is incredible. It features a challenging AI, uh, auto auto control modes, different teams and colours, tactics, and a really smooth and accurate simulation. Completely mind blowing. Right, let's have a look then. Uh, player one versus AI. Yep, yeah, best of three. See what's the controls on this one? Oh, S for sound. Yeah, we want sound. Uh, oh, the controls there. Uh, one P one set. Oh, joystick, joystick, bar and zone. Fire one and fire two. Okay, cool. That's wicked. Uh, all right, so it's quite a cool menu system here then. Okay, I get this. Use midline. You want the midline? Uh, three is mode two. Don't want profile. All right. Oh wow, you can change the colour. That's cool. What was the original colour? It was that colour, wasn't it? I think. It was like a light blue. You can see all the colours of the Amstrad's colour palette here, by the way. Actually, not all of them. There's only a few of them. Right, let's start. Got for some funky music. Oh right, you had a night on the a night out on the uh, night out on the run with your fiance. Cool, nice. I'll definitely about you getting the show sorted as well. Cool. You're quite good at uh, to uh, these kind of tournaments, though. Are you actually dead hard? Wow, I didn't know they did tournaments this. Sweet. Let's see how we do. It's football. Oh my goodness. Uh, I'm, I'm just getting the hang of the controls here. Okay. Oh, the computer scored. <laughs> and they beat me already. And he shouts cheese at me. Hey, Nish, CBC Game Reviews. Take care, my friend. See you soon, dude. You're terrible at foosball, are you, man? She'll put you on bubble hockey there and I'll rip some new arseholes. Right! Sounds like a challenge, man. She'll for another time. Okay, how do we... How do we get out of this? Oh, escape. Right, okay. Oh, that's pretty cool. Even though I was rubbish at it. Oh, I missed, the, missed out on the funky music there. It says cheese. No. Okay, I'll, I'll get... Oh, no. FC Den Haag. I'm, I'm embarrassing myself now, aren't I? It's a foul. Oh no. What's my goalkeeper doing? This is really clever for a, getting football on an 8 bit computer. That's, this is really. Oh man, I got wrecked again. This is really nicely done. I rem I remember this one now, and I, I scored this quite highly. I think whatever competition, whatever uh, uh, section I was judging. Sorry guys, sorry about the yawns there. To get my sleep today. Damn it. All right. Okay. Is there a difficulty level? The AI is pretty good actually. Uh, I like this. Uh, six. What's six balls? Best of seven. All right. Let's put put it best of seven then. All right. Okay. Uh, lots of options there. Swipe shot is hard to master in real life. 
Well, I'm, I'm, I'm so easy to do anything here, but I think with more time and more practice, I think I'll get good at it. But... Lucky the tune here. Let's crack on. Control the goalkeeper. Uh, wow, the control takes some getting used to. So, it's kind of hard to explain. So, you've got your set of hands at the bottom here. You're always, without holding down the fire button, you are always controlling the right of your, the right hand. If you press down the fire button and then move directions, then you control your left hand. And then you'll see left and right to spin your player, and they'll see up and down to move move the players on the uh, bar up and down. Yeah, I just changed that, Paul. Yeah, it's a best of seven this match now. So yeah, okay, that's it. that's interesting. God damn it. I've got to push right to. Oh man, wrecked. I'll give this one more go, one more go, and then we'll move on to another game. Because I'm playing badly. I think it was pretty much a no goal, yeah. Keeper saved it. Okay. Oh. Why does he shout cheese <laughs> when they score? Bit rude. Okay. Oh, <laughs> cheese. Possibly. Oh no! <laughs> oh, okay, okay. We need to got. Sh ooh, ooh, we're making moves there. Ball's going a bit crazy now. Oh, and there you go. There you go. Fuss ball on the Amstrad. That's pretty cool. Got to admit, that is pretty cool. I agree with what Fran said there. The AI is actually really good. I mean, I got absolutely murdered there. <laughs> top stuff, top stuff. There you go. That's Fussball F3, a game by Quickel Miguel. And I hope he makes more games. Is, uh, I don't know if he's made any more since. Hey, welcome, Claude Rains. How's things in. Um, but are you in Bahrain at the moment? I can't remember where you are now. I always forget. How, I hope you're doing okay over there, though, matey. Right, next one. Uh, from 2019, we're going to play a game called League of Tanks. This is the next game that Fran has chosen. Uh, this is game. This this one was. Oh, pause me there. We've got some music on the title screen. This was made by his students. Uh, this is an interesting twist on tank battle games. It introduces one to four players. One to four players play with simple turning, moving and firing mechanics to make it quite challenging to control the tank and also to produce valid strategies against others. An interesting concept to explore further and produce fun multiplayer tank games. Uh, I think Brunei, Brunei, sorry uh, Claude, how's Brunei? Um, how's things in Brunei? Um, and OJB says good ball physics. Yes, very good physics in that football game. I think this game is best enjoyed with four players. And we're on a single player. Uh, pause. How do I? Uh, 
a Z and X. Right, your your tank is constantly rotating round. So yeah, you cannot control the rotation of your tank. I, I sort of vaguely remember this now. And I kill the other player there. Right. Got to, there's a mine that's just been placed there, so we've got to be, we've got to avoid that. There you go. Interesting. Oh. Okay. We got him. We got him. There you go. Hey Brian, how you doing, Mr. Brian Hooper? How's tricks, dude? You back on nights again? Oh man, unlucky. Oh, I got wrecked. Yeah, it's a fun little game. It's weird how the tank is constantly rotating. Oh, right. No. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Imagine playing this to four players, though. I think that's been quite good fun. It's like an improved version of combat for the Atari 2600. Yeah. I think that mine spawned right on top of me. game yeah I suppose as well uh, Bryce is only every week but uh, the, the weeks are working on the weeks I'll be joining the uh, Marvel streams so it's not all bad yet. okay Dick okay thank you Brian no worries mate but yeah if you enjoyed combat on the uh, Atari 2600 you might enjoy this one um, but yeah I think uh, I think what Fran is looking at here, this is a, this has an interesting concept that could be explored further in the future, and it's good to produce multiplayer tank games. So yeah, four players can take part because you've only got two controls: one to move forward and one to fire. Right, whilst the rotation is happening automatically for you. You can imagine lots of people gathered around a keyboard. You know, uh, four people. All they need is to two 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 keys to do their controls. Cool, good stuff. All right, um, because of time tonight, I'm going to move on to uh, Fran's last choice, which is from uh, the 2020 uh, CPC Retro Dev. This one is called Vandal Box. I hope this works. And it says, uh, this is an, an original and interesting puzzle concept. Oh, music. It's quite playable and enjoyable in its present status, but the concept itself deserves consideration. Maintaining the mechanics, a good rework and polish of the game can potentially produce an innovative, innovative sorry, an amazing game for the Amstrad CPC. What's the controls here? Uh, Q, O, P, move. Basis action. Right, okay. Q, O, P, and space action. Oh, I remember this. You have to get to the box. Now, it starts out pretty simple. Ah, you can pick up objects, drop them. Look at this. It's a nice build-up in, uh, in the levels, showing you all the tricks you need to learn. So that's good game design there. Oh, well, then you just have to get to the exit. Right, okay. Yeah. 
I mean, it's nice and responsive. Very fast, smooth movements of sprites. But yeah, the graphics are really basic. Really basic. But, ow. Let's see if I can get to the top there. I don't think we can. Bit of platforming uh, skills and timing needed. Space bar to pick them up. Uh, Maud remembers this one. I remember this one. Uh... Ah, I got stuck. How do I restart the level without quitting? Ah, oh, R to restart. I think I'll wait it out. Okay. I don't know what that is there. Is it, so, is it sort of an invisible platform? I'm not quite sure. Oh, you could fall and then jump. It's almost like a, it's almost like a double jump. Reset. Reset jump. Okay, you can jump on that thing. Ah, that pushes you upwards. Right. Ah. Bugger. And that's game over. You reach level 11 for escape to return. Ah. Oh. Okay, that's kind of cool. Oh, what? one more time. What's the title? This is called Vandal Box. Uh, Graf, uh, Graf Sass, welcome to the stream. Yeah, this is called Vandal Box. This is from the 2020 CPU Retro. 2020 CPC Retro Div, and this is one of Fran's students at the university who made the game. This is their very, very first, obviously, Amstrad game. And what a good game to start with. I'm actually quite enjoying this. If you look past the simplistic graphics and music, there's a solid game here. Okay. There we go. Cool. Uh -oh. Yeah, you can't pick up two at once. Obviously. So if you fall, you can jump twice. Sorry, if you fall without jumping, you can then do a jump on the ball. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, these things reset. Okay, that's cool. Ah! Hey, Grafsas, thank you for the, uh, for the subscription there. Well, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Uh, can everyone tag Grafsas and give him a nice, uh, friendly welcome to the Amstream? I'll start it off there with a nice hello. Get a bit of lag on the chat. Try refreshing again, OJB. Sorry, dude. Um, Lager on the Vic 20 Vic was good, but I had fun playing that. Almost did level 10 in minutes, but always play it like Panic and Stinky is wrong. Yeah, do you think this has got a bit of a load runner vibe to this one? No, we haven't got any enemies chasing us, but maybe we'll get enemies later in the game. There you 
jump me there. Anna's teasing me the fails there. Movement reminds me of Miss Input. Yes. Yes, you like that one, don't you, Rob Brim? <laughs> okay, so with this... Arse! Oh, made it, okay. Block. Oh, come on. Oh, that's stupid. You had to be next to block. Oh. Beautiful. Oh, got a gun shooting at us now. So more and more things get introduced as the game goes on. That's cool. Hope that's respawn. There it is. Ow! I think you get the idea of this one. Um, where's my music? Okay, music's good. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, th thank you for those of you giving uh, Graf Sass a welcome to the stream. That's very, very kind of you. Um, Incracte, good to see you as well, my friend. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Uh, really like be really like this music. Cool. Yes, it does get a bit repetitive. Uh, and Tall Paul TP, I didn't get a chance to say hello to you earlier. How are you doing, Tall Paul? I hope, hope it was all all is good with you. Um, uh, we're going to have to say a proper good night, everyone. So, uh, so enjoy the rest of the stream, and I will catch up with what I missed on Monday. Take care, all much love, Bry. Bry, take care, my friend. I know you must be shattered uh, after work and all that kind of stuff, dude. Take care, mate. Have a great weekend if you can, and uh, we'll see we'll sp see and speak to you soon, dude. Take care, Bry. Um, so there you go. Um, that was uh, Vandal Box from uh, the 2020 CPC Retro Dev. And then some of them, uh, a few of them there, I haven't actually played before, actually. So that's all good. All's wheel. I hope you're okay. I'm doing good, Tool Paul. I'm bloody knackered this week. It's so busy. But other than that, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I'm good. Right. Um... Shall we show some people? Do you know what? I'm going to show you what I think is one of my favourite games from the CT Retro Dev. Let's just go one of the uh, big games. Um, some of most of you should have seen this on my stream before. I've had it. I've had it a couple of times, at least I think. Uh, but this probably is the game I most go back to and play, apart from Barber's Palace, which I'm, I've been doing like a semi 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 regular playthrough on twitch of barber's palace i need to come back and finish that game up i'm on like level 70 and i am <laughs> i haven't streamed it for like months but apart from barber's palace this is the game that i've come back to the most can anyone guess what it is before i load it up uh other bright has to go here also lads of chat great streams i've enjoyed your weekends everybody take care mr brian or eugene or brian higgins thank you again mate i heard you're doing some great Sprite working Yellow Belly's new game. Really looking forward to seeing it and stuff. Take care, Bry. So the both uh, both Brian's have a great weekend, you pair. Anyone guessing? No? I'm gonna load it up. Cauldron 2. Not Fire Tire. It's from CNG Soft. It's the adventures of Timothy Gunn. And Charlie, Charlie 5, you're still here. I can't remember if I can't remember if I put this on your list or not, but this is a must play. Mostly because it's got the bloody Peter Gun theme on it. Now I'm not sure which version of the game this is. He, uh, 
uh, Caesar R did several revisions and versions of um, this one, released on his own website, which had some improvements, some bug fixes, and, and a proper end of level boss battle, I think. Fire was a good guess, though. Another game from Cesar, but I've played this way more than the others. Still here, I'll check. Yeah, this is a cool one. Another good fun with this one. It's like Cobra on the ZX Spectrum. You know, the one made by Joffa Smith? But much, more, much better, I reckon. Right, uh, escape some reach by controls. I'm gonna use my joystick for this one. Two from Spy Hunter. And Blues Brothers, it's uh, the Peter Gunn theme. It's an old TV show in America. Man Shovel will tell you all about it. Level one, here we go. What you wanna do is, uh, we need to find a, a good place to sort of like chill at. This might be a good place. Uh, it wasn't. I got wrecked. Right, I need to remember the tactics of this one. It's like a mix of Cobra and the first level of um, uh, the Untouchables. You've got to find a guy that's holding some documents and shoot him and kill him. Oh, this is the right place. Oh my goodness, I'm getting wrecked. I think this is Jean-Michael Jarre's song, this one, yes. Oh, there's a guy! And if you kill them, you get a bit of energy back as well. And a good place is like a, this section here. It will change on level. Each level layout change though. We need to get him to drop down. Man, I'm getting absolutely wrecked. Damn! Yeah, if it's on there. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think you'll have a good fun with this one. It's a, it's a short, simple blast. Bloody hard, but there is there is a tactic I worked out a while ago to do well in this. Oh. Like an area. Oh no, that, that didn't work out well at all. Pick up the weapons because it restores your energy a little bit. Ow! Oh, we did it. We just made it there. We just, just made it there. Scroll is really nice, though. Yeah. Looks good. Never seen this, Robin. Ah, have you not, Robin? Lovely, isn't it? Maybe something like... Maybe, maybe here might be better to like sit at. I don't know. You want to be slightly elevated off the floor and have a bit of like movement left and right. That's why I'm choosing this area. The machine gun. There you go. Takes a piece of evidence there. Anyone got a score? Shoot anyone else? Pick up the uh, pick up the evidence there. 
Whoa! I got absolutely destroyed there. Game over. Whoa. Get a nice high school table music there. Better level five. I have beaten this on stream before. Uh, bear with me just like 30 seconds, guys. I'll let you enjoy the music. Be right back in 30 seconds. Always amazing to rock rim there, of course. The music here. Uh, Matt Comedy like loves trying different 8 bits. I love 8 bit tech the most. Oh, is it is it the most fun? Because then you get to see games that have pushed the boundaries of 8 bits, like Pinball Dreams and uh, Oscar Z on the Amstrad, you know, for example. This game is pretty good. So when you come across a good game. I love this music. Hey Sakis! Hey Sakis, how you doing? Just perfect stream, really interesting interview. Have you just caught up with it all of Sakis? Fran is a lovely and a fantastic uh, person. And Sakis, is, you've done several games for CPC Retrodev yourself, haven't you? Are you entering this year? Uh, I am a judge on the, one of the panels, but um, I have not looked at any of the games yet. I'm saving it for like Sunday and Monday to sit down and spend a few hours going through them all fairly. Uh, OJB, take care, man. Nighty nights, you dude. And thank you again uh, for Mrs. Zypho's pad and the extra goodies as well. I hunt the Maud. I don't think I got a chance to say hello to you, Maud, earlier. I hope you're doing well. Gangrel sticking his head in. Coming for the Peter Gunn theme. Uh, yes, A bit is the most fun. Most game design technical innovation leaps happen for me in the 8 bit era. There's something about the 8 bit era where there's there's enough restrictions, but just some, just slightly enough freedom to do some amazing stuff you didn't think was possible. When you got to like the like the 16 bit era, you found like with Amiga, Atari, ST games, in my opinion. They really did take advantage, did full advantage of the system from really late on. And a lot of the earlier games are pretty poor ports of like existing arcade games and existing 8-bit games. So if you're an ST and Amiga owner, it really was like the 1990s onwards that really you saw like what your Amiga could really do. I never owned an Amiga, I never really owned an ST, so if I'm wrong anyway, please. You correct me in the chat. I'm sure, like, uh, Rock to Elevenwood was someone like that. Who knows their uh, onions? Hey, Pro Del Boy, good evening, mate. How you doing? I'm having a great night tonight. I'm gonna have this, I'm gonna have one more go on this, and then we'll move on. Oh, two pieces of evidence already. Three, that's a really good start to this level. It's important you collect all the items because each of the items, even a gun pickup that's worse than the current gun you've got, will give you a small health increase. As you saw just there. Oh my god! Just did it there. Just did it. Um, Paul says, I'll always look forward to CPG Retro Dev each year. Amazed at the quality of some of the games that I entered. So equal, even better, some of the commercial titles back in the day. This certainly does. Name a better run and gun shooter uh, from the commercial era on the Amstrad that runs as fast as this and is fun. Um, let me just catch up the chat, actually, there. Uh, Matt Comler says, I agree, Zypho. I also think Agree got in the way of Amiga ST official conversions. The C64 games post-1988 are mostly rubbish. 
Wish OSG was here. I wonder what he would think about that comment. In a nice way, of course. Um... Oh, uh, Ruprim. Good night, Ruprim. Take care, man. Um, it was lovely to have you here. Uh, good night, dude. And uh, we'll see you next week for CPC Retro Dev. Um, I don't know. I mean, I always thought the Amstrad games got better as the years went on. Does, does anyone feel that way? Um, like, what did we get? In 1988, we started getting games like Robocop, Renegade. Actually, no. 87... Renegade, Grisor, stuff like that. 88, Robocop. Um, I'm thinking Ocean stuff now. I don't know why Ocean stuck in my head. And then, you, like, after that, 89, looking, talking Batman the movie. And then you have Ghostbusters 2. Uh, oh, 87, 88, actually, you had Operation Wolf, things like that. That's a fantastic conversion. Um, yeah, up to about 1990, I think it was, like, the peak Amstrad period. 1990, talking like, then like Rainbow Islands, the Untouchables. I think the Untouchables was 1990. I can't remember actually when that came out. Uh, Turtles Coin Up and all that kind of, all those kind of games. And then maybe 91, 92, it started to, mm, a little bit with the odd one or two popping through. That was awesome. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to put into, hard to put in to the right picture. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. Um... Gary says the 8-bit era was also when people were not 100% sure about the limitations of devices. But as time has progressed, more and more stuff has become achievable. Exactly. Exactly, Gagrel. I mean, basically, it was only platform more and more basic, but later the software really pushes the platform to the limit. Yeah, it just, it just like, I think with um, 16-bit era, the start of the 60-bit era, the ST, early ST and Amiga games, most of the progress have come over from the Commodore 64 or Spectrum or whatever. And they're just like, I, I don't know what to do with all this stuff now that's available. <laughs> um, uh, it's, it's a weird time for 16-bit owners. I think I was, I would have been a happier 8-bit guy up to about 1990, 91. And then, then I'll get really jealous of like the stuff in the 16-bit era is around about that 91, 92 period. I don't know. I was quite happy with 8 bit uh, for most of my time. So, never. Re I actually, I never really lost it after an, an, an Atari ST or an Amiga. That's the funny thing. I was quite happy with my Amstrad. That's just me. That's just me. I'm a daft bugger. Anyway, level two. But interesting, interesting topic discussion. I like it. Get a bit wrecked here. Can we find somewhere better? <coughs> Maybe here? Oh, there's like a little gap on the boxes there they jump up on you from. Oh. No, this is not a good place, I don't think. guys. Wow. Wreck. Uh, I was Oh, actually, I'll have to read that properly in a second. Oh, sorry. Uh, I have a nice day almost all the bugs tricks of Vic and Sid were known and used. Conversion was stopped by 1989. Uh, I don't know, I mean like, you had some really good later on games like Creatures and bloody, um, what else? Oh, there's 
a really impressive platform. Uh, man, I forgot the, the name of it escapes me. I think it's from the similar guys. I think it's from the same guys who did creatures. Died. Correct. Weapon up. Oh, one more to pick up on this level. The blue bar at the bottom is your progress. There you go. There you go. So, what was that? Sorry, yeah. I imagine, Ken says, I imagine that software houses have accumulated libraries of routines from previous software that allowed them to achieve more the same development windows yeah yeah i think like a lot of uh like ocean got a scrolling routine going for like robocop and then they reused it a few times after that like for um batman the movie probably that was mike lamb on the amstrad and i think like uh, there was like little pockets of teams there was like two two team two or three teams you'd have a coder graphics artist and sound guy working on uh, a game project for the Amstrad. You have three Amstrad teams. I think there was like three teams working on the Commodore and three teams working on the Spectrum in like groups of three at a time. Um, so they'd often reuse a lot of the same code. Like uh, Operation Wolf team then went to did Rambo 3, uh, Renegade 3 unfortunately. Um, not as bad as everyone makes it out to be, but it's still a pretty terrible game. But um, yeah, yeah, I think uh, a lot of uh, coding house was reused once they got a good routine going. Yeah, totally agree. Um, Paul says, I always wonder how differently CFC would have been viewed back in the day if we could have seen what we know it's capable of now. Pinball Dreams, Orion Prime, Shadows of Sergoth could go on. But uh, it's like what Fran was saying earlier in the interview, that there, there is still things being discovered about the how the video mode works on the Amstrad and how flexible it is. Remember the bit in the interview when he's talking about you can change the different character sizes uh, on the fly. There's still th things being learned about the regi register tricks of the CRTC chip, which is the chip that controls the video display. Um, there's still like things being learned there um, and tricks being found to this day. So. Imagine what you just look at what you saw on Pitbull Dreams, yeah. And so I think there's more to be found as well. But I think it's 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 because t enough time has passed and like it, you've hit certain roadblocks and then the next checkpoint is pushed forward and the next bit is pushed. It's like um, Charlie Farr and like him going for Donkey Kong world records. Charlie Farr's got a few world records, you know. You, you. Uh, every few months, you hear of someone else getting the new Donkey Kong record, and it thought it was never possible to get past like a million points. And someone, someone got the first million point game, and someone got 1.1 million, and someone got 1.15 million. Like a year later, a few years go by, and then the unthinkable happens, and a new technique is found, and so forth. It's like that. Yeah. Um. Wasn't that? Yeah, there's a talk about. Oh, yeah, there's an argument there about the number of screen modes on the Amstrad. I've heard people talking about mode three before, and I'm like, what? Is that a thing? Is there is there a mode three that makes four screen modes? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe someone can tell me in the chat there. Jolly, welcome to the stream as well, Jolly. How you doing? Rafo Lumio, Lum, Lumio as well. Hello, welcome back as well there. <clears throat> Saki says, I think the speed of knowledge through the internet and absence of, an, um, absence of antagonism helps to have these best games now. That is a very good point, Saki. It's obviously the, the dawn of the internet and sharing of resources and knowledge and stuff um, is great. But you have to have good people that are willing to share that knowledge as well. And I think there's a lot of people in the Amsha community that are sharing libraries and routines of code and code bases that allows others to jump on it and use that and springboard off and find new techniques. And there, there just seems to be a lot of teams collaborating, collaborating with each other and mixing with each other 
in the Amstrad scene. Which is why I, I, I am super proud of the Amstrad scene. Which is why I'm really, I'm really proud to be of the Amstrad scene, do you know? There's, there's very, very little falling out and uh, toxicity in like Facebook groups and communities and stuff like that. You walk into some Spectrum groups. I was talking about this to Fran earlier. I wasn't going to mention the groups, but some Spectrum groups, some Commodore 64 groups, especially some Commodore Amiga groups. Wow. Yikes, the things I've read in there. <laughs> and the arguments I've seen. <clears throat> There's some really bitter arguments in the Spectrum scene, especially over that bloody... Um, uh, what was that failed console? The, the Vega. There was like two different warring camps. And if you were not 100% in one camp, you were a shill and like evil and nasty and like got bitter. People were uh, like dossing each other and doxing and harassing, setting up websites to harass people, uh, harassing their families. It's, it was me it's mental. Have you ever heard anything like that happening in the Amstrad scene? I haven't. Anyway, I'm rambling. Sorry, guys. Um, didn't Pimp Batman Group say, it says Paul, that the Pimple Dreams only shows off about 80% of what the CPC could do or something like that. They said something like that. They did say something similar to that, I think. Hmm. Ken makes a good point there about the CRTC tricks. Is that they don't work uh, the same different variants using the CPC's lifespans. That is very, very true. There were at least several revisions of the CRTC chip. Um, I think there are about five different versions of the CRTC chip. And there may be just some slight differences between some. And I can tell you, I can tell you a reason why I know this. Um, Smash TV on the Amstrad. I bought it on budget. I've told this story before. Uh, Smash, Smash TV Hit Squad, uh, label one. Bought it. Uh, brought it home, loaded it up, um, and on the first, you, could, you get to, you, I can play the game on the first level, first screen, blast all the enemies, and then it tells you to move on to the next area. And when you move through a door, a CRTC trick is used to make the screen sort of wrap around, like that. And uh, what happened on my Amstrad was it would start, it would wrap, the screen would wrap, and then start doing it infinitely, and then crash. And I couldn't work out what it was. But I had a uh, bugged copy of the game, took it back, got a replacement copy, did the same thing. Hell. This time I wrote to, uh, I rang up Ocean, I think back in the day, or my dad did, <clears throat> and they told them a problem, and they sent me another tape out, uh, and, and they did the same thing. And I think, uh, I don't know, I don't know what we did, I think we took a photo of it happening on the, on the monitor. I sent it back to Ocean, and they couldn't work it out. In the end, they sent me through, like a bunch of vouchers and a bag full of like um, hit squad tapes. I was like, yeah, <laughs> that was cool. But I never got to play Smash TV properly. And the reason being is my Amstrad 464 had a slightly different version, an unusual version of the CRTC chip. So probably 90 something percent of the Amstrads Smash TV would work on. But on mine, do the same thing every time. Crash, so there you go. It's very, very rare, very rare. Craig says, oh, about the uh, modes on the Amstrad. There are three official modes. Mode 3 is a CRTC hack that was well used back in the day. Now with mode and raster splits, the CPC has near infinite number of modes. Beat that Commodore 64. That's true. In fact, I think that ties in what Fran was saying about the different character sizes and all that on the video display. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Charlie says, I'm, I'll definitely never have the Donkey Kong record. Hey, never say never, Charlie. It depends how much time and effort you want to put into it. I, I believe in you. I think, Charlie, if you dedicated your life, your uh, like basically your life to it, I think you'd eventually get it, knowing you. Because it's, well, I think it's about a lot of putting a lot of work, time, and effort into uh, Donkey Kong build record, <laughs> Donkey Kong scores, and improving on it. I, I believe you have the ability to do it, though. Never put yourself down. Uh, how's the migraines lately? Yes, Anna. I, I better crack on with the game, actually. I've been jabbering too long. Um, migraines, not so good. I've had a few of them. But in the last, like, few weeks, they have sort of subsided. Oh, that guy, the machine gun, wrecked me. 
At the moment, I'm doing all right, but I think I'm going to be I'm going to be speaking to the doctor on Tuesday, and I'm probably going to get my meds off. I hope. Because my vision is still crap and blurry. It's it's a, it's amazing I'm able to play any games at all and do well in them. Oh, I can't get to the... Don't get up there because the items drop to the very, very bottom floor and I can't you can't jump down a level. You have to fall off the outside and then like go and get go and get it, but there you go. Right, that's enough of that one. Um, I'm gonna, um so that was the the adventures of Timothy Gunn. Bloody good it was too. I'm gonna do what one for Craig Harrison because it's good to see him back here. I think he really wanted to see this one tonight. Here is another big game and a big winner of the CPC Retro Dev. This is Operation Alexandra. And I think you wanted to see this one tonight, Craig, didn't you? Um, I'm not sure what to dedicate my life to Don Kong. It's not that good. There's a lot of fame that comes with getting the record, though, Charlie. Nice intro sequence here. I'm only going to play this for a short while because I really wanted to dive into some games I haven't played before from previous years. This one, of course, I played through on the stream when it came out. Bit20 had some awesome abilities like those CPC screen effects you just mentioned, by both. Okay, I thought it was still fairly restricted in how its hardware scrolling and sprites like work. Um, I think with the Amstrad CRTC, you can pretty much almost do what anything you want. It's not. It's un, it's almost unlimited, but limited. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe you've done son of Peter. Good. I, I guess so, man. Shovel. Um. Both my talkies are type 0, both my CPC 6 are type 1, and all plus machines are type 3. Type 4 must cost down pre asic I'll have to I'll have to open up my old 464 and find out which version I've got, Craig. Is it easy to tell from the chip? Is it actually on the front of the chip and it says which version it is? We should try to get something sorted to up and uh, do Amstrad games again. I miss my 6128 now. Oh. From his Gangrel, like discs are really expensive to go and buy on eBay and stuff. So, would you go like GoTech route, or maybe get a cheap GX4000 off FleaBay and get the C4 CPC part that's loaded with tons of games, and you've got a SCART out on the back of the, of the GX4000, which is great for catching on almost up to modern tellies. Um, modern modern tellies bought bought if you buy them in the, in the most recent last two or three years probably won't have a scar input on them but no. anyway oh okay my comment i mean uh, i mean how are you size to move the rep screen around on the vic chip not scrolling doing things in it so can the commodore 64 not do that are you talking about the vic 20 i'm getting a bit lost there Did miss any messages there? Uh, I think the CP uh, Torpal says, I think that CPC scene, at least on your stream, are very drunk, so no one takes anything seriously, therefore, no arguments. I don't think everyone's absolutely blasted drunk at the start of the streams and uh, and all that kind of stuff. I think I think we're pretty a good community, and I've uh, done my best to try and maintain a, a positive and friendly place here anyway myself. Some of my streams and weed out the weed out the bad eggs, you know. And I think a few of the bad eggs are long gone. Maybe not completely forgotten, but long gone. Um, yeah, probably could do go take for disc rom stuff. I think so, game I think that's the best option. Probably six one two eight is getting up, going up in price at the moment. The best play, the best thing to do is maybe look on Facebook Marketplace and keep an eye on there. Because the people don't tend to know what they're selling on there a lot. You may get one with a knackered disc drive and it's just like a disc drive belt needs changing. It costs you £2 for the belt and uh, 20 minutes to swap it around. Right, to play. It 
it looks like an old abandoned Nazi base and whatever happens here does not seem nice. Uh, use no Olympus Amsterdam Diag. Oh look at that fading lights, that's a cool effect. Uh, first we'll detect your CRTC type. Can I put that on a, uh, can I put that, oh man, I don't know, I, I, need, I don't have a disk drive for 464, I don't have a GoTech or anything, I don't know how I'd load that, I thought that was, I thought that was on a cartridge, wasn't that, Craig, am I, am I wrong? It's a good place to be, oh, thank you, dude. So we can shoot and destroy those enemies, we've got a health kit up there. I love the fading lights on this. So this is another game I recommended for you, Charlie. Uh, it is a tough as tough as nails platformer. Can't get up there. Um, it's worth having a look at. I think it looks quite. I think it's quite impressive graphically. Gonna wait for this to open up a thing. Oh. Security door works by electronic opening. He seems the base is running out of power. So we've got to do something about the power supply. Oh, I've got a petrol can. Enemies always respawn if you go off the screen and come back on it. Okay. Yeah, I remember this now. Oh, there's like a generator down here that you have to fuel up, I think. They're indestructible then. It's a lovely looking game. Love the music. I love the graphics on this. Oh. Oh right. Power's restored. I love the graphical effects they've done on it as well. Really, really nicely done. Ow. Oh, cool. I just realised the second fire button has been is used for jump. That's nice. They've mapped, so they've used both fire buttons. Oh, arse. Ah, he got up to jump as well. That's cool. Now, the second fire button was, wasn't often used on the Amstrad for much. It's good to see them uh, using it here, though. We need that health kit soon to get to it. Isle of Schools there, lovely. Um. Ah, oh, can I leave him? Yeah, like from Wolfenstein 3D FC Den Hog. Oh, did I get shot there? I thought I was safe. Let's kill this thing. Bugger! Got it. Right, we can just chill here a second. Let me just catch up the chat there. Uh, I took a few beers today, so I hope, I hope I didn't insult anybody. And thanks as I could translate my Euro English into proper English. No, your question was good, Mike. It was a good question for Fran earlier. Yeah. They were lower ROM R disk image, but there is a CDT2. Right. So can, I, can I just buy it on a... Uh, oh, actually, I can't load it on disk on the 464. I've got no method for that. Oh, I could set up the M4 Wi-Fi on there. Can I run it, can I run it from the M4 Wi-Fi card, Craig? Uh, that, that program. 
And thank you, Tool Paul, there. It is a, nice, it is a good place to be. Agreed, agreed. Um, I love to watch commies keep the crap out of Nazis. <laughs> okay, Man Shovel. You like it, this game? Have you, had you seen this one before, Man Shovel? I love the look of this game. If this game's almost seems to look like this the 80s, we'd have won the 8 bit wars for sure. Agreed. Agreed. Actually, probably not, because no one would ever agree on it at all, would they? A bit Ra Rachel read this a few days ago, but she has a censored version without the swastikas. Oh, really? There's a censored version? Oh, God, yeah, I might get in trouble on YouTube for this. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, if you need a tape maker, I'll make a tape of it. <laughs> nah, don't go to any bother there, Craig, so I, pr I probably can't be asked looking at it. <laughs> anyway, I might just open the case and see if I can determine uh, what chip it is. Uh, just by looking at it. Might be able to do that. And there you go. Now we can use the switch to escape. There you are. Ow. Oh, I'm going to die here. Yeah, wrecked. <laughs> That's game over. No lives no um, continues or anything like that. Wow, it's a, it's a tough one, it's a tough one. I wasn't really playing it that seriously there. That gives you a good view of Operation Alexandra. Right, does anyone have any recommendations for a CPC retro dev game that wasn't like a, a winner or in like the top two or three that you'd like me to take a look at that may, that you think should have some more spotlight? Has anyone got any, um, remember a game they'd like me to, uh, like me to play and see? If not, I'm going to go through my list and have a look and see um, some of the games from earlier years. Because we're gonna, we've got about half an hour left of the stream, just under. Oh, thank you, Paul. Thank you. We've tried hard to keep it that way. And Craig, that was very kind of you to offer to make a tape. But really, um, uh, does it really matter finding out what chip I've got in the, my 464? I don't use it much, the 464 anyway. I do all my stuff in the 6.28 plus. What's a Marzi slug doing in a fishbowl with legs? I've no idea, man, shovel. I've no idea. We don't ask, says Anna. There you go. Has anyone got any recommendations? Put them in the chat now. Bear with me just 20 seconds. 20 seconds, maybe. Hang on. Let me over here. Goatfish, says Maud. Oh, I remember that. Okay, we'll have a look at Goatfish. I bait. Oh, this is from Irving Padgett. Yes, who did run CPC as well. He's a he's a he's in the Am Squad. Of course, Goatfish is hungry. Goatfish is always hungry. Go, Goatfish, go. Eat until you've eaten enough. Oh, yeah, he didn't. Unfortunately, it's cut. This game is kind of half finished. Goatfish. Um, I, I like that. I like nice effect, simple effect, simple thing to do there. Nice effect on the goatfish name there. Half fish, part goat, all gluten. Right, eye instructions. Uh, joystick arrows, left, right to turn. Uh, fire space to swim. Peter pause. All right, okay, cool. Right, let's go. Oh yeah, you gotta keep uh, you gotta keep feeding so your energy doesn't go down. Let's put some music on. What a clever game! We'll have a look at his other game as well before uh, after this one actually. Ah, oh, poor goatfish. Ah. Oh. So if you bash into stuff, he kind of he kind of bounds. Oh, that's at the top of the water. 
That's that's nuts. I love that. No, quick goat fish. And we ran out of energy, so you just keep eating as much as you can. This could be a kind of a score attack game. Maybe you could use it for a competition one day. Um, yeah, it's a fish of goat head, sweet up the horns, puts a battery on the turn table. <laughs> There's not going to be that many people who know who Baffery are, man, Shivel, but I like I like it. <laughs> Anna probably does. Paul Fenrir probably does as well. Or Henderson here. What a cool little game. It moves really nicely and smoothly. Oh. Goatfish. Whenever I say goat fish, I, uh, there's a there's a sound in my head of Bill Hicks doing his goat boy routine. If anybody knows who the stand-up comedian Bill Hicks is and his goat boy thing, that's what that's what I hear when I hear goat fish. I'm, I'm not going to attempt to do a Bill Hicks impression. Don't worry, especially goat boy. Oh, I love how items at the side of the screen sort of expand out. You look very carefully, they sort of sort of stretch as you get closer to them. I like that little sound effect there as well. No, not go. Oh! Mike ZT! Thank you for one pound 28 there, the 128k. Mike, thank you. Exclamation mark bananas Please don't in the kill chat. fish goat. I'm trying not to kill fish goats, goat fish, whatever it is there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we have some bananas in the chat for Mike ZT there? Thank you. Matt Commodore says, Rip, Bill Hicks, rest in peace, loved his little miracles pop sketch. <laughs> I love, I freaking love Bill Hicks. I think, oh man. Uh, I wish he was alive today. The Bill Hicks that smoked a lot. Yes. Yeah, he did quite a few routines on smoking, actually. Still funny, even if you're not a smoker. Bill Hicks and uh, uh, George Carlin. Two greatest comedy exports from America, in my opinion. Anyway. And both, sadly, are not with us anymore. Oh, just, I, I always think, like, what would they make of the world today? And, you know... Trump and all that. Actually, let's not get on political discussion, but just saying. Just saying. Goatfish, no, don't die, goatfish. And I think this just basically goes on forever and ever. So it's just like, it's how long can you survive for? Oh, goatfish died. Never mind. Yeah, so like Bill Hicks was like really popular over in the UK and he hadn't even toured, I don't think, properly. Uh, uh, I think I can't remember. I remember like he was like a big deal in the UK in like the early 90s, but like in America he was he was playing like tiny, tiny little clubs for most of it. <laughs> Wouldn't cup, cup, cupcakes get soggy underwater? Just saying. Stop it, Craig. It's video game logic. <laughs> You like a bit of George Carlin as well, Anna? Yeah. Oh, I love I love a bit of George. Bless him. All right. Okay. So this was by... Go that was Goatfish by Irving Pajor. I think he also entered another game called Run... Yeah, Run CPC. If you haven't seen this, this, this is great fun as well. Irving Pajor is a member of the AM squad as well. Oh. Oh, hang on. Hang on. We had, we had instructions there. And we had music. Sorry. Hang on. Let me just re load that up again. This is from 2015. Instructions. Uh, fly the landski, lands, land skimmer with arrows or joy, joystick. Good flying. Cut pick. Uh, gain energy. Clean. Well, I don't understand that there. Uh, cut pick between crew and. Okay. Um, how far can you fly? Oh dear. Right. Okay. This is called Run CPC.
And the answer is not very far. Bloody hell. It's kind of an avoid em up with like big chunky graphics in a free. <laughs> it's, it's not easy. Try this again. Ah. Oh. Oh, you remember this Mike ZT play this at a forever demo party? Sweet! I'd love to go to a demo party. Great. Fail. So, not very far. And again, I think it's like how... How far can you go? How long can you survive for? These do change up. This reminds me of the, like uh, this of uh, that game Blaster. We were looking for those of you that were on the Twitch stream earlier uh, l last week or earlier this week. Yay! Oh, this rocks! No! It stops you going too far over to one side, actually. But there you go. That's my best score. 265. I actually made it to the high score table. Cool game. Back to the future names in the high score table there. There you go. That is run CPC there. All right. That's our one, made by one of our own there. I hope he makes another game soon. So I'm going to have a look at some of the results uh, from the contest and see which games I haven't played that were higher up. Um, okay, so I'm going to switch over to a browser, my browser. Now this is CPC Retro Dev 2014. Uh, here are the results. Here what the winner was. Super Retro Robot Rampage. I haven't played this. Shall we have a look at the winner of this? Of the CPC Retro Dev 2014. Super Retro Robot Rampage. So, okay. Have a look at that. Right, super, was it super Retro Robot Rampage. Right, okay, cool. Oh no, Tall Paul got kicked in the nuts by the Nightbot for bad language. Nice that, but uh, simple but looks fun. Cool, cool, cool. Hey, no worries, Mad Commodore. Take care. Good luck with your horde of cats. I hope they survive bomb by night, alright. Take care, mate. Nice chatting with you as always. Take hey, uh, And uh, have a great weekend. I never really checked out the Shadows of Sergoth on the Amstrad Paul, unfortunately. Dungeon crawlers aren't really my thing, but I perhaps I ought to should I should do that one day. But I heard about the Amiga port coming out very soon. Oh, okay. So I'm the white thing, so it's WSAD to move and cursor keys to shoot. So press up cursor to shoot up. Right cursor to shoot right, etc. So this is like a really early CPC retro dev, obviously. 2014. I think the first one was 2013, but I don't have the list of winners for that one. Ow. Got him. Yeah, it's got a bit of AI in the game as well. It's it's like it's it's, it's a bit like Robotron, a little bit, isn't it? It's Tofu Boy. Oh God. Oh, this guy hides and comes back. The green ones are stupid and just make a beeline for you. And there's a hit and there's this, this guy that's hidden. Oh, he spawned right on top of me. God damn. Okay. 
Hey, Charlie. Good night, dude. Take care, man. It's nice of you to pop in, man. Uh, hope you had a nice chill here. Uh, and I'll catch you on Twitch in the week, mate. Probably more than likely. Have a great weekend, dude. So, yeah, this is not a bad little game. Oh, look at the red one. Oh, I died. I took some damage there. What do we think to Super Retro Robot Rampage there? <laughs> Oof. Yeah, I'm only ignoring that. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, run, piggy, run. Right. That naughty night bot. Yes, that naughty night bot. Uh, Alright, I'll give this one more go. One more run. Now I figured it out. Oh, we can only shoot three fireballs at a time. You got a counter of them uh, on the uh, top there. That's cool. That's a nice touch. The music's alright. It's better than having no music, maybe. Ugh, me. Right, so this purple git will hide away from you and move away from your fireballs. So there's a little bit of AI here. Got him, but I lost one of my hearts there. Nice classic arcade feel. Yeah, not bad. This might have been a student entry as well, I don't know. somewhere but he's not revealing himself has the game crashed I think it might have crashed So the blue enemy that disappears and reappears, he disappeared, but he did reappear again. So I think we just encountered a bug. Oh, bless. Never mind. Never mind. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh, there he is! Oh! He's just, like, hidden for ages, so you have to walk over where they are? That seems a bit... This guy is sort of like reverse mirroring what I do. If I move up, he moves up. If I fire up, he fires down. Interesting. Ah, oh, it's game over. All right, so that was Super Retro Robot Rampage. Um, that was quite cool. Uh, I think that was quite possibly a deserving winner. Um, let's have a look. There you go. That was number one in the CPC Retro Dev 2014. Um, Orcs Dungeon, the level of... C I think we'll move forward to 2015. Because I've only got about less than 10 minutes left. Actually, less than that. I've really got... Watch it. I will have to finish early tonight. Uh, I'm really, really super tired. And... Um, I'm going to have a long night ahead of me tomorrow. Oh, there's Run CPC. Run CPC, we just looked at. Only got to six in the competition. Wow. And there were some good games here. Look here, we got yeah, Space Pest Control from Usebox on there. That is uh, Juan Martinez, a.k.a. Redak, who's done... Um, oh, um, oh, God. Bloody hell, I forget the names of the games. Uh, Space Pest Control. Um, uh, Magica. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. Brick Rick, Golden Tail, Kitsune's Curse, Magica, Dawner Colonel, and Retainer Trackster. So he's been making lots of games since. There you go. So that was in the competition. Uh, Space Pest Control. Let's have a look at that one quickly. Uh, space pest control, right? Here we go. Oh, uh, 
Uh, Manchester says, where's a good shoot em up in the CPC Retro Dev competition? Oh, let me just pause my music. There's generally quite a few shoot em ups, but they're more like Space Invader type shoot em ups. Usually made by students and usually placing quite low in the competition. Those are kind of like higher up entries, and I can't remember many shoot em ups. There's one called Space Cowboy that was quite good. Made by the guy who did the CPC soccer game. It was a, it had a quite a few bugs and quirks in it though. What's that guys? I just need to blow my nose. I'll meet the I'll meet the microphone this time, let you enjoy the music. Oh, good night again, Charlie. Take care, mate. Um... All oh, right, bloody hell. Okay, right, yeah, yeah. I'm not even getting involved in that conversation there. <laughs> you know which one, right? Uh, space pest control. Let's have a look at this one. Oh, actually, redefine maybe. Oh, hang on, redefine. I can't use the left key. What? Oh, oh let's go joystick. Let's fire. Right, okay. Ah, oh, I've got a percentage for my gun, bottom right. Okay. Looks, if it's space pest control, I assume then I've got to shoot all the aliens. Oh! I've got to duck and shoot. I've got to shoot all the aliens on a level. How do I get up there? There's like, looks like there's like a portal we have to use. Ow. I like the look of this one. I love the kind of the use of colors there. Sp sprite moves really nicely. Oh man. It's got a properly wrecked there. Nice little shoot em up. Platforming and puzzle solving, probably, I suspect. There's a health kit there. Far right. We get to a big open section with three platforms. Okay. I remember to hold and push right then. Space pest control, so you're like an exterminator of like alien bugs, I assume then. Ow. That takes me back here, right, okay. That's where the med kit is. If I drop immediately right here on the next screen. Got the med kit. There you go. Oh, that's cool. Purple and blue, use your illusion too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Amstrad has really nice uh, range of blues and pinks and purple. Oh, God. Sorry, guys. Uh, blues and purples. Some really nice blues and purples. Can make some stunning looking games. Um, purple Saturn Day being a uh, purple Saturn Day being a good example of that. As you can see, uh, Juan is using it to nice effect here. Ow! Right, there's a percentage of like number of bugs left on level eighty-one percent. Oh, okay, I can't duck that. Okay, fair enough. Right, 
Right, where do we go now, boys and girls? Cleared off most of this level. Oh, so I've got to redo that bit again. We're only 65% done, so where do we go next? I'm liking this one. Uh, nice uh, uh, responsive controls. Uh, sprites move about really fastly and smoothly and fluidly. Um, could be at 25 frames per second, maybe just under. Oh, we haven't gone to the left-hand side here. Very good for a one-man game. Yeah. Music as well. Too many silly hits here. The portal. Got it. Okay. There's nowhere else to go on this level. That's a kid of toilet show up a lot. What's that? Is that Hannah? Are we talking about a uh, manic miner or something like that? Let's drop down here. Maybe there's something. Oh, got him. We're 50% done this level. Ah, oh, I've got to drop down the right hand pipe there, I think. Actually, no, that just takes us to here. I'll check it. I'll check it. That, yeah. Okay, so this is all done here. Uh, this looks good. This and the table football game, the highlights of the night. You really like that table football game, the foosball one. Awesome. Ah, here we are. Teleporters there. Oh, look, there's a little space invader in the background there, in the background art. That's nice. Okay. Right. Meh. Where does it actually drop me? I don't know. Drops me to the left of it. I don't. Uh, um. In the toilet, don't fall in. Hang on. Right, I made it. And now I've got a room full of portals. And we are 41% done. Ah, oh, I have to go back. Okay. I presume this is the same one. Yeah. Go up here. Oh, that's a bit unfair. Got him. Oh, there was a med kit right there. That was space pest control. I quite like that one. That was cool. That's like one of my favourite of the Juan J. Martinez games, actually. I like that. I like a good run and gun shooter. If that one was a little bit slow paced for a run and gun, but it was still good. I like that one. The killer toilet, don't fall in it. Uh, Mighty, Mighty T says, Space Invader, I'm going to take a picture of my bathroom wall and post it on the Discord. Okay, cool. See that in a bit. Invaders. Da, 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 da. I know that one, man, Shovel. <laughs> Opener of the a Number of the Beast album. With that all range gun. Yes, Raffo. Yes. Like this one a lot. Oh, God, it's 2 a.m. I've got to finish. So, let's have a look. Is there any more from this I need to have a look at? Man. Do you know what? There's so much more games to have a look at. I wish I had more time. 
What was the 2016 games? 2016, what do I need to look at? Oh, that was Outlaws. Higher Hair, oh man. Dragon Attack, Hair Boy. There's loads of great ones. Higher Hair is looks stunning. Actually, I'll drop back in. I'll give you a quick look at Higher Hair and Dragon Attack. Dragon Attack, you, you'll like Man Shovel, I think. That's a shoot em up. In a way, it's a bullet hell shoot em up. This isn't. Welcome to the world of higher hair. Press escape to find the controls. Press fire to start the game. But this is by the same guy who did the adventures of Timothy Gunn. Uh, oh, okay, no worries, Craig. I'm about to head to bed myself. But uh, thanks for tuning in, mate. You've been here right from the beginning to the end. I appreciate that. Thank you, Craig. It's just, uh, just what I need to start. Oh, cool. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed the Fran interview as well. Right, let's, press, let's just press fire to start the game. Uh, oh, actually, oh, escape. Right, then. North, south, west, east, fire, jump. Look at this, it's a 3D isometric game, but it looks gorgeous. I'd love to do a playthrough of this and figure out the city. Oh, look at this. It's a bit like Get Dexter, isn't it? Away, little um, la lady hair. I think it's a lady hair. Avoid the ghosts. Ow. I love the artwork and sprite design here. Oh, this looks great. And I'm not a big fan of isometric games. But this look, this one looks like it could be a hoot. Isometric, I know. Good night, Craig. And take care, man. Have a great weekend. So we're gonna collect keys and lanterns or something. You haven't come across much objects to collect yet. got magic. I don't know how you open them. But I think that is a lady hair. I think I think I think that's a bosom there. I think that's boobies, isn't it? It's got a sort of split uh, split dress there. Love the look of this. We'll have to do a play for this one. Uh, like maybe do it on Twitch or something like that guys yeah i think i'll do that all right before we finish tonight dragon attack and, and i'm kind of gutted that i didn't get through more cpc retro dev games we'll have to do another part to this another night um or um we'll do we'll play through them on twitch or something like that maybe on monday something like that so, Paul, you like the look of that? I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to spend more time on it. I should have finished about seven minutes ago. Um, control. Joystick. Uh, okay. Stop. I don't know what the options there for fire mode were. But, uh, Tall Paul, I'm on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Zypho. Um, I might start doing a playthrough of Fire Hair on there. We usually do, we might do Amstrad on Monday, usually. So I might do some more CPC Retro Dev on Monday. A hair S, if you will. There you go, Ken. Right, S to start game. Let's go. Oh, 
this is a bullet hell shooter on the Amstrad. Sim a simple uh, one. Gotta kill the center of drag. Ooh, center of the ship there. I'm trying to paint myself into a corner there. Remember, there's only the centre dot on your ship could be uh, is vulnerable. Love the music here, and it gets progressively more or harder. Oops. I think they should have placed higher in the competition, personally. I think this ended up being placed way too low. That's how the judges' scoring can go sometimes. If you want to win the CT Retro Dev competition, your game really has to be the full package. I think Joffa would like this one. Dragons get bigger and bigger. If you destroy the sent dragon first, you'll destroy the whole ship at once. Oh! Wrecked. I tried what my old Mac don't like Twitch. Really? You tried a different browser on your Mac? Like Opera or something, I don't know. Easier than Galactic Plague. I can't get at Galactic Plague. But once you learn the patterns of Galactic Plague, you should be able to zip through it fairly. There you go, that's Dragon Tag. What do you think to that man, Shovel? Not your traditional uh, shoot em up, but like, um, well, that is cool though. Guys, I am going to have to finish though, I'm afraid. I'm, I've, I've got such a long day ahead of me tomorrow and a really, really late night. Sorry I can't go on for another hour or something like that. Um, what's with this place, Rob, mate? It's just standard. It's got fourth place. There's a really good puzzle game that came third. Higher Hair came second and Outlaws won. So that, I'll just show you it quickly. We saw our Outlaws at the start of the stream. That got first place. That was like that Cabal style shoot em up game. Higher Hair, we saw a glimpse of uh, just before this one. Second place. Virus Dog was actually a really good puzzler. He shifts things around the screen to kill viruses. Very good game, actually. Dragon Attack ended up fourth. And Hair Boy was really good as well. That was a Super Meat Boy clone. That was really, really good. That was a good year for games. And then look, there's Pingu Soccer we played earlier, the good AI. And quite a lot of these were quite good little platformers from the students as well. I remember some of these now. Yeah, this, this brings back memories. The 2016, that was a great year. That was the first, I think 2016 was the year the CC Retro Dev kind of like got really noticed by the Amsterdam community. Because how many good games there were. But Outlaws and Higher Hair, outstanding, obviously, looking there. Dragon Attack should have at least been third, I think. But Virus Dog was very, very, very good as well. Anyway. Yes. Right, I think uh, I'll pause that there. I'm going to have to finish for tonight now, guys. Let me just stick to my outro. Um, you might have to just up the rate there, uh, FC Den Hog. Um, you probably got stuck on it when you had a little uh, blip on the stream earlier. Anyway, guys and girls, thank you very, very much for tuning in. So I hope you enjoyed the stream tonight. We did something a little bit different with like a, a live interview and a special guest. I hope you found that interesting even if you weren't sure what the CBC Retro Dev was and like you're not that interested in geeky Cody talk but uh, he was a lovely lovely guy Fran uh, so um, we uh, owe Fran a big uh, thanks uh, for being such a good sport a uh, great interviewee and um, an all-round great guy 
Man, I wish I had him as my teacher slash lecturer or whatever, you know. <laughs> That's all I'd say. Thank you, Mike DT. Thank you, Maud. Thank you, Tall Paul. Um, oh, yeah. My reception ops just not upload Twitch. Brave. Time for you to upgrade, Tall Paul. It's time, TP. Um, interviews are always good to watch. Thank you, FC Denhog. Yeah. And it was nice to answer some of our questions as well from the chat. Great stream, Trini Novel. Great uh, hang on the Amazon squad on another fun Friday night. Excellent. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for all the donos tonight and the cheeky ones, especially from Man Shovel stuff. Um, thank you, Paul Henderson, aka Fenrir. Uh, cheers to a great stream against Zypho. Oh, sorry. Ooh, sorry for yawning. Uh, and cheers for the chat, everyone. Awesome as always. I'll catch you the first part of the stream tomorrow. Oh, bless you, mate. Thank you, dude. Thank you. And uh, glad you had a good night out with the missus tonight as well. Right, um, I, I, I'm patrons. Hopefully, we'll get a video on Sunday or Monday. Um, and I'm sorry for the lack of video content on the main YouTube channel. I just had, a, I have had an incredibly busy time, and it isn't looking at looking like slowing down anytime soon. I've got a job I'm working uh, on tomorrow night. I'm, I'm at a club night DJing. Um, I get back at like four or five in the morning. Sunday, Monday, I've got to go through all the CPC Retro Dev games and get my scores in for that as a judge and juror on the CPC Retro Dev. That takes hours because there's like 30, 40 games to get through and I take things seriously with that. I take it very seriously. And um, yeah, what else? I've got to get the, I've got to get the Am Squad t-shirts posted out next week if I can. Oh, Jesus. And I want to get articles written for the new Antics magazine. They want they're wanting it like for next week. So Jesus, I do. I have very little time. I would, all, of course, be on Twitch in the evenings doing some little, uh, uh, short some some streams there. So catch me Monday to Thursday there. And of course, we'll be back next Friday with the Am stream where it will be the actual 2021 CPC Retro Dev. We'll we'll be looking at all the winners. Um, and we'll play we'll play them in reverse order, starting with the winner to the um, lowest scoring game at the end of the stream. That's, so that's going to be really good fun. We um, the CPC retro dev streams are definitely not ones to miss, especially because we get the students coming in the chat. It's always extra busy, and there's a bit of buzz and a hype around it. And uh, we're going to have like at least 30 to 40 new Amstrad games to look at next week, and they're always fun. Especially the ones that score the lowest score because when things go wrong in the game is often quite funny and hilarious and the bad graphics and things, but hey, it's all good. Thank you everyone for tonight. So I will try and get a new video done as soon as I can for the channel, but you obviously you get to see me on Twitch and, and streams as well. And uh, I'll, I'll try and reward patrons some way soon. Thank you everyone. I have a great weekend and hopefully I'll see you all again very soon. Take care everyone. Good night. Thank you for the lovely messages there. And I'll see you all soon. Goodbye. Bye.